Good morning, everybody. Bright and bushy-tailed. None of that four o'clock stuff that had us all looking back into our cup of tea. This time we're upright, staring out across a gorgeous-looking London morning. We're above the Thames, 17th floor of the Times building, next door to the Shard, which is uh, alongside Borough Market and London Bridge here, right in the heart of the greatest capital city in the world. And it is uh, indeed a picture we've broadcast over the last two test matches from India. We had plenty of snow, plenty of uh, freezing cold weather, but not today. It really does feel like the start of spring. Uh, we've got a fine team with us. We'll be joined by Kevin Peterson for this test match. Uh, we'll come to him in a minute. Steve Harmison is back. Darren Goff is uh, alongside me. Akash Chopra, who tuned in from India for the first two test matches, is here again. It'd be great to have uh, Akash and his insights uh, all the way from across the the world and and all in all i think we're, we're in good shape we're quite excited about one all in the series darren goff is, is buzzing he buzzes it's what he does he buzzes he you, you never know buzz actually do you it's just called coffee mate uh but uh, good morning everyone uh, looking forward to this i've been really excited we've had a week uh, to wait for this day night test uh, the pink ball we've heard so much about it what's the pitch going to look like we saw a green pitch six days ago uh from what we've seen the pictures Back from India so far, um, it's not green, um, just to give you a clue. No, but <laughs> nor did we expect it to be, but it, it does make me wonder about the, the articles written and some of the headlines, England bowlers lick their lips at thought of using pink ball. Is it different, the pink ball, if it's bowled on a pitch that doesn't have a lot of grass as against one that does have a lot of grass? Well, I would say it depends on how well the pitch has been prepared. I think we saw in the first two test matches where one, uh, the first test match, which was a well-prepared pitch, it was the red soil, wasn't it, the first test? Um, once it went, it went quickly from day three all the way through to day five. In the second test, I think it was a different soil. It was slightly underprepared. Well, <laughs> definitely underprepared. And we saw it turning and spitting uh, from the first two hours of the test match. Now, this one, I think they've gone down the red soil route again. So I'm excited to see how this is going to be. And will the toss of the coin be important? Yeah, will it be a win-toss-win match? Uh, just a reminder of the previous two test matches. England won in Chennai first up by 227, resounding. India by 317 in the second match, even more resounding. So conclusive wins for both sides. Excellent for confidence. It's, it's reasonable to say both teams have to win this match if they're to qualify for the World Test Championship. Winning this match is the first stage of, of that process in the remaining two games. More of that uh, a bit later, because at the moment we're planning to look forward. Before we do, though, we have to reflect back on a match, the second of the Chennai games, that was so dominated by the Indian team. Bowls. Beauty! Oh my goodness, LBW, yes! Left alone by Shubman Gill! Broad now, oh what a stroke, oh. overpitched by Broad. Wow, a craftsman at work, Rohit Sharma, beautiful fifth ball of his innings. Oh, oh it's bowled him! Moeen Ali's got one to absolutely rip! Nothing wrong with that, Virat Kohli. Yes, you can get balled out by Moeen Ali. On your bike, son. Here is Moeen once again, little sweep shot, top edge, and down towards deep backward square leg. They're turning for the second, that's Rohit Sharma's century. Luckily, Goffey being the ultimate team man he is. Asking everyone, sausage or bacon? <laughs> sausage for me, Goffey, please. Bacon for me with brown sauce, please. Akshari. Jaruta swept into the leg side, top edge. Cortis, short backwards square leg. Ashwin takes the catch, and England are in deep, deep trouble. Change of attack. Oh, and that's taken by short leg. Ashwin once more tosses. Come on up, and he's bold, Stokes. England are bowled out for 134. Here is uh, Leach again. Down's got him, stumped. In other news, Ben Folks. Oh my goodness. Moen is on his way, he's bowling over the wicket to Ashwin. Down the pitch, he's edged it. It's flown over Ben Stokes, it will go away towards the boundary and the crowd can no go, officially bonkers. Because Ravi Chandran Ashwin takes his helmet off and celebrates, he goes to 100. And he goes to sweep and they appear oh, and he's giving him out. Down comes Moen Ali and it just nails it into the crowd. Down he comes again and there he goes again. Another one. Cool deep in for the 18th ball of Moen's innings. He's come down the pitch. He's missed it. He's stumped. It's game over. Moen Ali shakes hands 
with Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli and Ajinka Rahane and the game is done. India win by 317 runs. Thumping, resounding, ferocious, whatever you want to call it. Uh, India got level in the series by winning with the margin of 317 on the back of Rohit Sharma's superb 100 and an all-round performance to remember from uh, R. Ashwin. It means that England are on the back foot here, but a different venue, now the largest in the world, 110,000 seater stadium that can have 50,000 in it for this game, um, will provide a pretty formidable atmosphere, but a very different challenge in a place and on a surface we know so little about, and England with a great deal to do. Uh, a warm welcome first to Kevin Peterson. Great to see you, Kev. Morning, Mark. Morning, everybody. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, bound to be a fascinating test match. The pink ball in a stadium that has been talked about so much around the world. Everybody wants to play there. Everybody wish they played there. And it's a stadium that uh, you'll turn up and you have a look at all the social media feeds of all the players. They are all excited to be named in the 11 to take on in this test match. And when you're playing in India and you have the opportunity to beat India, having beaten India two or three weeks ago, uh, it's, it's a good feeling to be in a camp that knows that there is a possibility of beating India in India. It's a great feeling. So that lives on even though you've taken a pounding in the next game? Uh, absolutely. 100% that lives on. You have to. I mean, there's no point being there if, uh, if it's not going to live on. And uh, these players will know that uh, they have the opportunity uh, and they know that they've done it. And you can only draw on past experiences. And the past experience, if you can put to bed Chennai in the second test match, Chennai in the first week was great. And that's what you've got to draw on as a player. And it's about each individual's battle with uh, a member of the opposition. Steve Harmison's also here with us. Uh, Harmy, uh, the first thing I need to know is whether you were up with us at four in the morning to listen to the first ball, because you had a game off last uh, home uh, and chilled. Uh, not quite four in the morning. I was up very, very sharp. I had, I had my granddaughter, so yes, I was up very, very early, but not quite four in the morning. I think it was about half five uh, when she decided that the toys and the milk came into the into the bedroom and uh, she was up. So, no, no, it was fantastic. It was fascinating listening to, to Matt Pryor and the, the, the P he did with Jared was, was fantastic. But just to pick up on what Kevin said there, you know, I go back during my time and you talk about momentum and you, you talk about games and the game shift from us sitting here in London, that 2005 where we got battered at Lord's we win the toss, we win the toss, and by lunchtime on day, day one of the second test match, we were in the ascendancy. So this is quite simply, if Joe wins a toss here, gets over that new ball, gets some, you know, gets some runs on the board without too much damage at lunchtime, then Chennai's second test match is gone. And I think you have to draw on the fact that England are, have been a very, very formidable side away from home. And the, the, the thing I like about this side is they don't get too high when they win, don't get too low when they lose, and they, they stay quite level. So for me, that is what's going to stand them in good stead um, for the start of this test match. I think the good thing as well, Army, is but after taking a battering in that second test, after winning convincingly in the first, it comes down to this test match where I actually think it's helped England having these changes. Not ideal. We, we all don't agree with it. I changes mean, to players. Changes to players and personnel in the starting eleven. Because how's, of, how's it helped? Well, it's helped because players are not scarred from the previous game. They're coming in on coming into a side where they're trying to impress. So say Bairstow comes into the starting eleven uh, today. He's just uh, been watching two test matches. He's now trying to get his test place back. He comes into the side. Zach Crawley's been injured. Does he come into the eleven Again, he's been desperate to play. You've had Archer who's had a game off. So I, I just think it's actually worked in their favour, that bit of it. I don't agree with it but it might actually help them recovering from that defeat in the last test match. What do you make of that, Kev? Uh, and the toss is so important. It, it really, really is important. It, it, it either inflates you or deflates you as a player, especially in India. And the toss won the game in the first test match and the toss won the game in the second test match. And <laughs> that uh, two or three minutes of when that toss goes up and it comes down and, and even the captain's walking out, every single batter... And I suppose every single bowler and I suppose every single person in both dressing rooms will be watching with intent and with purpose to see which side the coin comes down. Because, <laughs> <But do laughs> like it or not, that first innings, batting, 
uh, this morning or this <coughs> afternoon, being a pink ball test match, uh, is going to be the best time to bat. Do, do we have any insight on the pitch other than rumour? Absolutely not. And uh, I, drawing from previous experiences, we played in Ahmedabad, and I know it's a rebuilt stadium. Uh, it's an incredibly slow wicket, really slow wicket. But they've got red soil, black soil. They've got all sorts of <laughs> soils now <laughs> that they've produced. Uh, they've got soils that uh, are exactly the same as in the pr as in the practice facilities as well. They say it's the first stadium in the world with the practice facilities and the middle. They have exactly the same soils. So the players would have had at least a week to practice on it. And you mentioned, if you're saying that, I've, that's the first I've heard that, that the practice facilities and the, mi the, the yeah, middle same. is uh, exactly the same. the same. Ben Stokes, the interview we did with Ben Stokes, he said when the lights were turned on during the practice, practice uh, time, the bowlers had to stop because the batters feared that they were going to get hit. The ball was jumping around that much. This is what Ben Stokes is going to tell us at lunchtime. But he's, we, we, we heard it before the test match that in practice, when the lights took effect, the ball was doing that much, it was zipping around, that the batters just took a little bit of a time out because they felt as though they were going to get hit off, off with the, the, with, the with a brand new stadium, you have a look at what happened at the Rose Bowl. I mean, yeah. We were playing at the Rose Bowl and we're all, all old enough to know we were playing at the Rose Bowl in 2000. Hey, that was a minefield, wasn't it? Chesley, so when you Chesley Street the same. Chesley Street, exactly the same. So, so we all know that a brand new stadium, you're not going to get a wicket that's been embedded for years and years and years. So actually, we don't know what to expect here. We don't know what to expect when the lights come on. And we, get, we don't get that, sorry Mark, we don't get that from being, from being 17 floors up in London. We don't get the, the little telltale signs when we're standing out on the field. You, Mark, you and, and, and Kevin know more about the IPL and being in India. You get, right, it's hot, so we think right it's going to swing a little bit more you go and watch Jimmy Anderson from even from a distance from a commentary box distance you can see him swinging the pink ball right that might have an effect on who might be playing Rory Burns is he playing well he's not at slip doing the slip fielding so all these telltale signs we don't get well, as well as don't get a chance to look at the surface I'm going to, we're going to look very closely at the teams in a second before we do that just to finish on the pitch there hasn't been a first class match played on the ground since 2015 but having said that the difference at the Rose Bowl was that everything was laid new this is actually a regeneration of the old stadium and in theory it is the same soil that's always been in that ground and I remember being well I was there in I hate to say it um, 93 um, you played there in 2012 and yeah, I very slow I just remember low and began to span spin big 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 it did it did it's it spun and it turned and it did all sorts it's it's the typical Indian wicket it's the typical wicket that they that they prepare for uh, an England team or for an Australian team or for a South African team but yes 2012 <laughs> very very slow she spun and I mean I'd love to say that I spent 10 minutes out there but I don't think I got to 3 minutes but I, I was like done and dusted I did like Ro Rohit Sharma's quote the other day when, when uh, he, he was asked to refer to you know pitches around the world and changing conditions and he said we can, you can do all the talk you want about pitches and you can do all you talk about on the pink ball in the next, next pitch and the fact that the, the grass may help it go let me tell you the next pitch will be about spinners just like all the other pitches are in this series. absolutely when i saw the reports about fast bowlers licking their lips i thought has a fast bowler ever licked their lips in india not for how many years not on this side of the room anyway <laughs> <laughs> only only funnily enough in the previous the only day night test in india in kolkata where, where india steamrolled Bangladesh and all the wickets were taken by Seamus. Seamus. <laughs> we're we're going to talk players and teams when we come back after this break. Before we go to it, a reminder that you're listening to the start of commentary on the third test between uh, India and England. We're on Talk Sport 2. We have the Times and the Sunday Times supporting us and of course uh, you can read Michael Atherton and Alistair Cook in both of those uh, papers, or rather respectively each in, in both of those papers. Talk Sport 2, uh, please download the app. It's a pretty simple process. Download the app register swipe left and you're in show a bit of patience and you'll be with us in seconds with the best possible reception we're here we're ready it's this brand new stadium and uh, my heavens above it's one all in the series i'll tell you what Brody, jimmy and joff have been licking their lips i tell you um it was funny actually training yesterday when the light when the lights came on the nets actually got really dangerous the bowlers had to stop bowling in the net because we were actually worried that some of the batters were actually going to get injured because the ball started jumping off a length and a few guys actually got hit. Um, so we had to take the bowlers out to the middle to finish off their spells. Um, whether or not that's going to be a similar thing out in the middle, we're not sure. 
but you can definitely tell the difference from bowling with a red ball in the sort of in the normal times you, you see a test match being played than when you have a pink ball in your hand and the lights are on. Ben Stokes there talking with Steve Harmison yesterday. We'll have the full interview with you uh, at lunchtime t today. Do join us for that. We've got two fascinating hours ahead of us, of course. What, two and a half hours, really, as we get ready for the start of play. But Harmy with Stokesy at lunchtime today should be a good listen. With me is uh, Steve Harmison. Darren Goff is here, too. And Kevin Peterson bringing a bit of balance to the lineup here with the... Uh, a batsman and this all <laughs> we're going to turn to the players now and who you know what do England do I mean there's Ben Stokes saying Jimmy Joffre and Brody licking their lips can you get all three of them in the team that's question one well I think you can um, I want to see Anderson and Broad bowling together uh, I don't think Broad really got the opportunity in that uh, last test match um, it didn't have an effect for the seamers like it did with Jimmy Anderson in that first test um, the only difference is I think it's going to be Broad or Bess uh, but with that pink ball and them talking like they have done about what it did in the nets and that swing I think they've got to go Broad surely wow that's a call yeah, that's a big call. <laughs> it's a real big call. I mean, played with him on a couple of tours in India, and you can see the difference in skill level between Anderson and Broad. There is just there is just it's chalk and cheese in terms of skill level and the ability to be smart enough to knock a batsman over in the subcontinent. And Anderson did that in 2012. Broad didn't do that. Broad left that tour early. <coughs> and I was fairly disappointed with the way that he bowled in the in the previous test match. Keeper up, bowling 75 miles per hour. And is that what Joe Root actually wants? Anderson wouldn't have done that. Anderson would have had the skill. He would have swung it in. He would have swung it out. He would have bowled his leg cutters. He would have made something work. And that's the difference of, uh, the, difference of the bowler. And I think this is a big test match if Broad does play. It's a huge test match for him huge for his resume actually and if it's a pink ball test match which obviously we know it is uh, it gives him a better chance because of uh, twilight bowling at night it gives him a better chance but and and, and the lacquer on the ball it's, it, the, the, absolutely. it's different that the the color in the leather comes from its pigmentation with the red ball but it's actually a pink lacquer that's uh, slapped onto the ball many layers and then a final layer of lacquer to protect it further so the different balls harmy a, a a question on this issue of, of the, the two of them and which plays. Um, if, if you go into the game with best not broad, you're relying on Stokes as your third seamer. If you do think, crikey, we did need three seamers after all, we didn't see much of Ben Stokes with the ball in these previous matches. There has to be a question mark about his knee. I think there's a question mark on that as well as putting too much pressure on the all-round package. Um, with with bat and with ball, I mean I can't wait to see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Why? Why? Ian both and bowled hundreds of overs and batted for Andrew Flint up on hundreds of overs. Actually, and yeah, and you can chuck them all the names at me. I just think Ben Stokes's batting is so important in this team. Callis batted with Smith and Gibbs and um, whoever batting at number three. Both of them had. You know, a decent top order England's top order is a very suspect top order and there's a lot relying on Ben Stokes and Joe Root especially to, to, to do the bulk of the batting you know, that's one way of, of looking at it it's a little bit of a you know, could be a little bit of a cop out but, and I think, I think it'll be a gamble from a, a team's batting point of view if they do go with broad and over best because then you've got I wouldn't say a four number 11s, but you've definitely got four number 10s playing in the in this side. You want to get 20 wickets, I agree, before Darren comes diving in with both feet. Um, I think one thing... But you have to... to, to go to, Just to go on what Kevin said there about Stuart, the one thing Stuart probably gives them more than what best give them is control. I don't think... I think if Broad, if broad well, players... Broad's given... Well, given you don't need the control. control. Homie, you don't need control in India. You need wickets in India and you need to build pressure. And I can tell you, with a keeper standing up bowling 75 miles per hour, you would face Broad without pads on and prefer to face uh, him than... But if you've, got, if, you've got a surface, if you've got a surface, if you've got a surface where you feel as though this game could end quickly, which... You know, what? What? Because it spins? Well, no, because... Then the you game, can't leave Bess out. No, because the games have finished early. Pink ball games have finished early, not because it's spun. You know, because the ball has done a done a bit. I think the the pink ball last pink ball game in India lasted two and a half days. The game in Adelaide lasted you know very very little time. These pink balls do a hell of a lot more than the, than the red ball does. 
that and if it comes to okay. that then you get to a point in the game where <laughs> it's not going to spin but let's just remember the left best out the last test match because he was lacking confidence is he suddenly got his confidence back by going to a different ground to be able to play him in a test match and have an effect on the game there's a lot of things to think about here as captain as selectors whatever you may be because as he suddenly got that confidence back you see Moe and Ali come into the side take eight wickets in the game he didn't bowl brilliantly because of lack of playing time. Now he's had a 10 days off, whatever it may be, and now he's suddenly saying he's going to take loads of wickets in this test match alongside Jack Leach. Would we be better with Joe Root bowling as a second spinner in this game? But again, like Army says, the work rate, then the workload, putting on Joe Root to get runs to captain and to bowl is too much. Bess has got 17 wickets at 22. In this subcontinental winter. I agree winter. with you, but he's got 17 left wickets. him out because so of lack of confidence. If he's got no confidence, he's got 17 wickets at 22. The guys took wickets. He might have bowled a lot well, of full right. tosses. They left him out because he got yippy with his full tosses in the second innings. That's the truth of it, isn't it? But he got 17 wickets at 22. So if you, if well, you go on what Kevin's saying, you need wickets. What you would need you wickets. get? Here's your question. I'm going to place... I'm chairman of selectors here. We're the four-man selection body. Have you got your you, computer? Because you, that's what Ed Smith will have you, out now. You're, Look at the you, stats. <laughs> you're, you're, optionless but to make a, you're optionless but to make a choice. Um, who are you going to get more out of in a five-day game of cricket in Ahmedabad on a new surf surface? A spinner. Stuart Broad or Don Bess? A spinner. A spinner. Stuart Broad or Don Bess? Bess. I'm, I'm going for Broad. He's I'm got he's got 520 odd Test wickets. Hardly any in India, Goffey. Okay, I'm going. Jimmy with Anderson had hardly <laughs> got any in India until this. this Check tour. Jimmy's stat statistics last tour. Check Jimmy's statistics and what he did in the first Test match. Okay, so we're split two two, and and we thankfully don't have anybody to make the final decision for us, so we can leave it ambiguous. Um, for, the, for the rest of the match. We'll leave it for Joe Root. <laughs> we'll leave it for Joe Root, yes. Um, okay, um, we're, what, we're very close to the toss now, about six minutes, so don't go away. Um, we're taking another short break. We're here on TalkSport 2, bringing you exclusive coverage of England's Tour of India. On DAB+, Plus, online, on your smart speaker, and via the TalkSport app. That's what the crowd wants to see. Exclusive ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the third test match, live from Ahmedabad. Only on TalkSport 2. It's your last chance to grab a winter deal at Screwfix. We've dropped prices on a whole range of products. But be quick, because when they're gone, they're gone. Don't be left out in the cold. Grab a last chance winter deal at Screwfix.com. Hurry, deals end 28th of February. Screwfix, you when you need us. While stocks last, price is valid until 28th of February. Visit screwfix.com for T's and C's, delivery charges and restrictions. Avoid the corridor of uncertainty with the best writers in cricket. As England take on India, the Times and the Sunday Times bring you all the ins and outs and the not outs. Catch in-depth analysis from our experts, including Mike Atherton and Sir Alastair Cook. Cricket, get the edge with the Times and the Sunday Times. For your one month free trial, visit thetimes.co.uk forward slash cricket offer. T's and C's apply. Subscription automatically renews unless cancelled. At Honda, we listen to drivers for inspiration, even when they say things we can't play on the radio. Like when a pulls out without indicating, or when a crosses the road without checking first, or when a doesn't understand how a roundabout works. That's why we developed a collision sensor system, which detects risks and automatically brakes. And to keep all family road trips family friendly, it's included as standard with the new Honda CRV Hybrid. Honda, the power of dreams. When your tenants have a burst pipe, superheroes crashing through the wall isn't going to help anyone. With Direct Line Landlord Emergency added to your policy, we're on it to send a rather super plumber in four hours and guarantee they'll use the doorbell. We can also assemble locksmiths, glaziers, electricians and drainage engineers. Search Direct Line Landlord Emergency. We're on it. Direct line. Residential properties. Optional add-on up to 1,500 per call-out. Extreme weather conditions may extend response time. Underwritten by UK Insurance Limited. Everyone staying in. Everyone getting on. Most of the time. Every extra thing we're having to do. Every plan we've put on hold. Every sacrifice we're making. Everyone who stays at home is helping stop the spread of COVID-19. Because the less we leave home, the less likely we'll come into contact with the virus. Everything we're doing is making a difference. Let's keep going. Stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Need a website for your business? Then you need 123reg. With our new website builder starter tool, fill in a quick form and you can create a site in less time than it takes to brew a cup of tea. 
And it's just one pound a month. A website for a quid? Yeah. Like one pound? Yeah, what don't you get, Gary? Well, I thought stuff like that was expensive. Terms and conditions apply. Register any business name at .co.uk for just 99p to get your one-page site online. Pricing excludes VAT at 20%. Visit 123-reg.co.uk for more information. One pound sterling? Oh, this is going to be a long shift. Exclusive ball-by-ball commentary of the third test match live from Ahmedabad. Only on TalkSport 2. Well, we're closing in on the toss. Uh, I won't turn to the guys. In fact, the coin is in the air. We've got big screens in our studio here in London. Joe Root has won the toss. He's batting first. Let's listen. First test match and then drive the game from there. What have you made of the surface? Um, a bit, bit really not exactly sure, <laughs> knowing what to expect, to be honest. Um, it's going to dry. It's, it's going to spin at some point. Um, which you expect is just you know, whether the dew and the, the lights, the ball play a bigger factor as well. A good rest between the second and the third test match. You've had some practice sessions. What have you made of this SG ping ball and how the practice sessions gone? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a, a lot firmer, a lot harder, stays harder for longer, seems to swing conventionally for longer as well. Um, so, you know, that's exciting for our team department. The series set up on a brilliant place right now? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, we're really excited to be one all in this series coming into this game. Great opportunity for us. So we're now going to have to play really well, play some really good cricket, but we're more than capable of doing that. Your team news? Yeah, we've got four changes. Um, Anderson, Archer, uh, Bairstow and Crawley come in. So um, really good opportunity for them to try and make a mark in this series. And I'm going to get you here in place of? Um, in place of Burns, Lawrence, Stone and Moan Alley. Thanks a lot for your time Cheers. and go well, Joe. Thank Cheers. you very much. Hello, <laughs> mate. Virat, you have to be bowling on this track. What would you have done? Yeah, we would have batted first as well. Um, looks like a pitch where, uh, you know, batting first you can put some runs on the board. But having said that, we expect uh, the pitch to assist the bowlers straight away. Um, looks pretty dry. The conditions are hot and humid. And um, yeah, it will be just good to get, get uh, into the game early on. A remarkable comeback in the last test match. How have your practice sessions gone? Because you're back in this beautiful stadium, which is looking spectacular. How have your sessions gone? Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, the practice wickets have been quite uh, spicy at the back, uh, quite sporting, something which has been a challenge which we have enjoyed as a team. Uh, but yeah, just coming to this beautiful stadium, uh, just getting to use the facilities, I think it's, it's an outstanding thing for uh, Indian cricket um, and for the world to see. We have such a big stadium, the, the largest capacity in the world and I hope that we play a lot more games here in the future and, and maybe in the, full, in the full capacity of the stadium, uh, the atmosphere will be something else. The reason I also asked that was because it's again a ring of fire, unlike the conventional floodlights. And also, you've got orange seats or red seats compared to a pink ball. How will, how will that affect the game? Well, I'm, I'm a, bi a bit more uh, you know, worried about the lights, to be honest, than the colour of the seats because it's easier to focus on the ball when you know, differentiating the colour, but when it gets lost uh, with the lights at the back, uh, it becomes impossible to spot the ball. So, yeah, look, it's, it's gonna. We, we played uh, in a similar stadium in Dubai, and I think the guys adjusted really well. It's just about um, getting to know angles and and probably body positioning and where you can catch the ball from. So, yeah, it's it's not a tough thing. Something that we'll have to adapt pretty quickly. Your team news. Couple of changes. Uh, Jasprit Bumrah is back into the team. Uh, Siraj uh, uh, misses out in this game. Um, and Washington Sundar comes back for Kuldeep Yadav. We we wanted to obviously have another spinning option, but uh, Washi provides much more with the bat as well. And especially for these kind of situations where you lose the toss, and you know uh, the game could be uh, pretty even heading into the second innings. Those uh, crucial runs at the at the lower order will be uh, very very important and something that we're looking forward to. Thanks for your time, Virat, and have a great one. We're all looking forward to a great one. Thank you. So that's what we have here in Ahmedabad, is that England have won the toss in this third test match. Okay, well, that's a good start for Joe Root to win the toss. There are lots of reasons for that. It's not just, um, you know, the turning pitch and not wanting to bat later in the game. It's also that, in my view, in day-night cricket, you should always bat first because you do get, you're guaranteed to have the first two sessions of the game in the best possible light. If you choose to feel first, you never know what conditions you'll bat in. Even if you bowl the opposition out cheaply, you may well find yourself batting in the first evening's twilight and then relative darkness. And you're not sure how that will affect the behaviour of the ball. So I, I'm convinced in day-night cricket, bat when you know you're going to get the best of the conditions. So these two sessions are very important for England with the bat. For, for that reason, above all the more... Uh, obvious ones in my view. The changes are, are interesting. Steve Harmison and Darren Goff are with me. Uh, KP will be back 
in a while um, and will indeed start commentary with Neil Manthorpe but that's not for just under half an hour yet so let's deal with these changes guys first because uh, England have four changes and they're not quite as expected to remind people that Joe Roots won the toss he will bat James Anderson and Joffre Archer are back into the side we certainly knew that Johnny Bairstow's back we expected that and Zach Crawley plays instead of uh, Rory Burns which is a, f a reflection as much as anything I think on his brilliant innings at the end of last summer when he made 260 odd in in a show of of command really and, and a suggestion that he truly was a test match player so I'm very pleased that he's been picked um, and the obvious leave out with Moe and Ali not here the obvious one to have left out and they have is uh, <laughs> would you guess it Don Best so he's not playing so England have gone into an Indian test match with one specialist spinner fellas it is um, a strange one isn't it um, although I said I would have gone with uh, Broad as well I think realistically if Joe Root could have gone out there knowing he was going to win the toss I think he would have probably gone in with two spinners uh, let's be honest about it but you don't know that dear when you're going out there so he's gone for the experience abroad um, and the pink ball and the experience of what's happened in the nets and and the last pink ball test in India where not an Indian spinner took a wicket it were all their seamers that ball Bangladesh out twice no but he's only picked two seamers what Stuart Broad no, no, no. no. Very in cold. India, we'll come to that. In yes, a yeah, I, I know, but I'm, I'm talking about uh, with England. Um, they've gone for the experience, obviously, of Broad and, and Anderson and Archer, the pace of Archer, from what they've seen in the nets. They've talked about it. They've talked us into this selection from three days out. Yeah, and I think it's. It's not, I don't think it's a gamble because you're gambling with people who have got a thousand wickets between them from a ball point of view. I think when you talk about winning the toss, yes, you win the toss you bat first in 99% of the time um, you do in test match cricket I think he controls the game if you get off to a good start if you get runs on the board I've had a, an experience of playing pink ball cricket in 2010 and I remember playing I remember John Stevenson from the MCC having a right go at me because we didn't we didn't get uh, let the MCC f make the MCC follow on we got fi we got nearly 500 as, at Durham and we bowled we declared at the right time we declared with our three seamers when the ball was doing a bit and we decided right this is the best time to declare this is the best time when the ball is going to be a, its most effective pink ball bowled the MCC out for about 160 300 nod lead and then it was like well the MCC thought well let's play the game you make us follow on to give us a better chance and we were like nah we went back and got 200 and declared exactly the same time the next day and had them 40 for 4 and bowled them out for next to nothing so when you say you want your spinners you actually if you get off to a good start like Mark said and you back well for two hours and you get runs on the board you can actually declare and have your seamers at the right time so and what, you, second you, day you tee on the second day is well, that when you're going to say they're going to be declaring well you utilize this I this, hope so this is this pink ball this is the thing about the pink ball and the lights runs on the board is actually it's it's not as a necessity as a first as, as, where, as where was that time. game played that Mama. was in Abu Dhabi okay I, I think <laughs> Uh, what we don't know here is the conditions and now I agree that come twilight and indeed going to darkness the pink ball does appear to do more there are two things there one is the evening dew moisture rising out of the ground the other is how much graft is le left on the pitch you leave five six millimeters and certainly if you leave seven or eight as they did in Adelaide at the beginning the first Adelaide one was eight of grass there's no doubt that that ball will zip around in that evening air. If you shave it tight, get it down to its bare minimum, it's possible that there won't be so much movement, particularly in an area that's very dry. Now, one thing about the heat here, 35, if it does go humid in that early evening and it, that ball is in good shape, it, it might swing naturally quite a lot in the evening but we don't know all of the things you're talking about are unknowns mm. aren't they complete unknowns you can control a match if, if things go your way with bat and ball under lights so you do a lot of your bowling under lights but by heaven you have to bat well first you have to bat well sorry Darren you have to bat well but Mark jo Joe's just said that this we've found that this pink ball steers harder 
for longer and it swings conventionally for longer he's just said that at the toss so that could potentially give you aware that this is that this is their thought process exactly what you've just described I agree with you but the thought process of India is totally different as Mark's mentioned they've gone in with three spinners they believe it's going to spin Virat Kohli just talked about it. it's going to turn uh, quite early on in this game they think it's going to deteriorate and I think it does the importance we're, you're right as well if they England are in control, they've won the toss, they get runs on the board. If they don't, India will be quite happy if they're going out to bat at tea time tonight. comes down to what we said, or as I said about the last test match last week. You can talk about the toss, you can talk about the pitch, and how much it's spun, and how much, it, was it good enough for test match cricket? It's about your actions and your performance. If England well, bat and bowl well, England will win the game. If they don't bat and bowl well, India will win the game. Right, I, I would just add a couple of things that are, <laughs> I think this tells us that Don Bess isn't right and absolutely. I, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it tells us that Ben Stokes isn't right to bowl more than four, five, six overs yeah I agree with that agree with you Mark I think with Don Bess we talked about it uh, just thing my worry concern was by picking Don Bess you're picking a guy who has long confidence they brought in Moeen Ali who had not played for six months he not hardly bowl the ball and, and, it, and it showed although Moeen Ali is a wicket taker and he took eight wickets in that test match and they asked him to stay by the way that told me that Don Best wasn't in the right frame of mind to be playing in the next test match just ten days later so that's another reason why they've gone for the extra seamer and it's another reason why we might see Joe Root having to bowl a few extra overs yeah well that's okay he's, he's not bad and we've definitely got our best bowlers on the field even if not necessarily the right bowlers for the potential conditions but there's a lot of unknown here um, I am worried a bit now for Dom I, I think it's a hard comeback from, from being left out and then not even being included in this game I, I, I have to say but Root's gone for the people he can turn to with the greatest reliability the, the thing is that comes off the back of this as well that we've seen so we've had two test matches at goal second, second one back to back game spun miles Two test matches in Chennai, second one spun from day one. We've got another test match on, on this ground in literally, what, 14, 15 day, or 13 days' time. We might need three spinners for that one. Because if you look at the overhead now, it is red hot out <laughs> in Ahmedabad. Well, well, actually, that raises an interesting point. Um, just regards to the World Test Championship, people aren't... Well, not everybody is necessarily aware that it'll take place in England in June, the final of the World Test Championship. India are firm favourites to be there alongside New Zealand, who have already qualified. Australia took themselves out of the race by pulling out of their tour to South Africa, where they only needed modest results to secure their position after a long time near the top just behind India. In short, if India win the series by any margin, um, say a draw and a win in these two remaining tests well that's fine uh, but they need to win it at least 2-1 uh, uh, England need to win both the games they have to win by two so England have to win this and the next test win it 3-1 and then they would go through to, to play New Zealand that would be a monumental performance uh, in many ways a, a good thing the, 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 you know, to, to have England play in their home country but equally I think to have India who are now the preeminent t test cricket nation for so many reasons in the first world Cham test championship would be a very good thing too. New Zealand have scuppered that. They can't both be there. New Zealand's cricket, particularly at home in the last year, has been, well, just outstanding, committed and outstanding and, and very entertaining to watch under a good leader, Kane Williamson. Right, if you're just tuning in, the news is that Joe Root has won the toss. England will bat first. The pitch is shaved. Not absolutely bare it's not baked mud there's a sort of Weetabix cut a look grass on it uh, England have brought in James Anderson and Joffre Archer unsurprisingly Johnny Bairstow that seemed pretty certain and Zach Crawley gets his place back in the side this place that he earned with uh, that 260 at the end of last summer and India have uh, Jasprit Broomer back they've brought in Washington Sundar as well so they've only got two specialist seamers Washington Sun does all round who bowls some off breaks not unlike R Ashwin uh, you might call him a poor man's R Ashwin with the ball at the moment but he'll doubtless learn playing with Ashwin so two very different approaches India in effect have three spinners and two seamers 
England have three and a half if you include uh, Ben Stokes, Seamers, and just the one spinner, though uh, Joe Root can turn his arm over. Hope that all makes sense. Tremendous excitement. We're going to have 55,000 people in the Sada Stadium today. The largest cricket ground in the world in many ways, and capacity is the one that matters most. Cricket in India is a unique experience. A very warm welcome to all our listeners if you're tuning here uh, on TalkSport 2 for the first time glad you found us stick with us we're also supported by the Times and the, the Sunday Times they have two great writers of course Mike Atherton and Sir Alistair Cook but the, the story is that Joe Roots won the toss which is great start you know you want to win the toss in India and I also think you want to win the toss in day night games I think it's very advantageous to bat in the first two sessions when you know you've got normal sunlight uh, it's quite going to cut hot there today, forecast around uh, 35 degrees. Um, we've got time before the anthems to turn our attentions to uh, Jared Kimber and Neil Manthorpe. Over to you, boys. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. Well, we haven't mentioned very much about the Indian team, and I think it is worth pointing out that uh, it's a, a, a milestone occasion for Ishant Sharma, who actually made his debut for Delhi in the Ranji Trophy alongside Virat Kohli. So they, those two go back 15 years. And, and Ishan, today's 100th test, Jared. Yeah, it's an incredible effort considering for the first 70 tests he averaged 37 and he's averaged 22 in the last 30. I mean, what a comeback that is in anyone's career. Uh, but look, there were little signs early on in his career that he was really talented. In 2008, he took Ricky Ponting five times. And that was just after peak Ponting, but still one of the best play players of fast bowling ever. Um, and you had this skinny teenager. I don't know if you remember him, um, Matt, as he had this huge Adam's apple. He really did look like a 12-year-old uh, back then. Uh, but he's also, when talking about uh, players of fast bowling, he's taken Alistair Cook 11 times and, and Cook averages 20.9 against him so he's, he's really has had an incredible record and the other thing is you talk about fast bowlers about 100 tests I'm taking out the all-rounders here so Callis and Botham and Dev he is the ninth uh, sorry the 10th fast bowler to play a 100 ten, uh, tests after Anderson Broad Walsh McGrath Vars Pollock Akram and Intini so just to you know stay that long and when you think about what an Indian seamer has to do. They're basically like a spinner. There are whole games where he doesn't do anything. There are whole games where he has to play at Nagpur knowing that he's the only seamer and there is no point in him even having the ball. Um, you know, it's quite a tough situation uh, to be an Asian seamer. Uh, well, it, and people say, well, his number of wickets per test matches is quite low. Well, he's played whole test matches in which he's bowled only six overs. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I mean, there are times when you, you don't get the new ball. In it. You, might, you probably don't get the second new ball. You probably don't get the new ball in the second innings as well. And they literally, they wait for the ball to reverse swing, don't they? So it, it's... Um, it's almost like it's almost like being a spinner in in, a, in South Africa or somewhere like that when you when you think about it. So just to be able to survive as long as he has and then get better the way he has, it's a phenomenal record for him. I'm going to ask you about day night test matches and whether this perception that they there's a they're wicket fests. But just before I just uh, before we get there, if I can, because I want to sneak this one in, it's just occurred to me. I don't know how you measure the length of a tail, Jared. <laughs> how do you measure the length of a tail? And is this England's longest tail for a decade? Because either Jack Leach or Joffrey Archer is going to have to bat at eight. Yeah, it's going to be Joffrey Archer, I would say. He's never batted at eight, so it's certainly the uh, longest tail since Joffrey Archer has been around. Uh, Graham Swan and Ashley Giles were around for a long time, so England actually had you know very strong uh, batting lineups. Not to mention that Stuart Broad used to um, uh, average a lot more as well so uh, yeah it is a tough one to tell but I'm with you I think it is probably one of their longest tales in a long time to be fair though uh, Joffrey Archer Broad and Leach are not exactly all number 11s either no no but they're probably not number eights either <laughs> to, be, to be fair okay right the, the last time England played a day night test match they got bowled out for 80 odd the last time India bowled uh, played in a day night test match they got bowled out for 36 so we're all expecting this to be a, a, a dramatic wicket fest but there have been 15 Ranji Trophy day night games in India 15 day night games and eight of them finished in a draw so we're getting a bit of ahead of, ahead of ourselves uh, it's it's confusing. Uh, the shortest test match in India history was the day-night game against Bangladesh. Uh, the pitch did not look like this, though, man. <laughs> um, so, so you do have that. But when you come to day-night tests, the average uh, runs per wicket is 27 in a day-night test. Uh, in the same period in the rest of cricket, it's 32.4. Right, so that is a huge difference, uh, a massive difference. So yeah, they they have gone for a lot more wickets, but 
again, I just want to say we, there hasn't been a lot of first-class cricket on this ground. We haven't seen a day-night test here. Um, everything that, that Stokes was saying before, that makes perfect sense. But until I see it in the test match, I'm not 100% sure I'm going all in on that. But as a general rule, the pink ball is a lot harder to pick up in key areas of the game. It's also, we don't talk about this a lot, gully fielders um, and sometimes point fielders really have trouble picking uh, the ball up at, at those key periods of the game. So it's a really interesting thing. Maybe not the wicket first we're expecting, Mark Nicholas. No, well, you make a lot of interesting points. Maybe not. You know, it, this is all conjecture. And uh, now Indian dignitaries are being taken by Virat Kohli along the line to meet the Indian players. As they step forward, make the traditional Indian sign of welcome by holding their hands together seemingly in prayer in front of their chest. Lovely, uh, warm and gentle people in India. It's a place of great social contact and, and uh, enjoyment in, indeed. They revel in each other's company. The sight of the ground is something because it's so colourful. So the stands are um, elegant, certainly. It's a huge circular stadium. Quite a gradient going back. I think if you're back at the back of a stand, you're going to have a less good view than one that has a steeper gradient. It's quite a, quite a shallow gradient. Um, but the colours are great, you know, there's reds and oranges and pinks and yellows um, making the the, uh, the seats that are mainly blue look really spectacular. It'd be interesting to see whether the ball can be picked up easily, the pink ball against that backdrop, particularly with spectators in multi clothed clothes. Now Joe Root is introducing the same dignitaries to the England team who look very pleased to meet him, uh, Johnny Bairstow, Jack Leach, Jofra Archer all make the traditional Indian sign of, uh, of warmth and greeting. Um, and as they walk around the ground here, uh, they ask little questions of Joe Root. And of course, it's, it's an interesting time. A captain's very proud to introduce his team to the most important people in the lands to which they travel. Um, equally, his mind's on the game now. He's won the toss. Uh, he's batting first. And you kind of want to just zone in you really want to be in your own space creating some form of a, of a bubble or a zone that is yours that that that, that allows you to wrap yourself in in the demands of the innings to come indian flags are being waved i cannot tell you what a treat it is to see spectators in the stadium and a lot of them i repeat that the stadium takes 110,000 at capacity and so they're allowed 55 today they're allowed 50 percent capacity and it's just wonderful to see their excitement you go nowhere and see such obvious excitement from the spectators and kev playing amongst the indian vibe whether it be an in international cricket or t20 cricket is just exhilarating i think we just uh, saw in the previous test match when they were allowed to have uh, spectators and fans that came into the ground there was just that excitement that buzz and as a player, it's something you want to experience. Uh, Goffey's experienced it, Harmy's experienced we've all experienced it, and uh, it is something just very, very unique. There's just something about it. Uh, the, the, the religious nature of what cricket actually is and how much cricket means to each and every individual in um, that great country of India, 1.2 billion people. And they love it. They live it. They breathe it. They eat it. They sleep it. They are literally just so, so engrossed in every single individual that plays for the country. And they're so hospitable to everybody who comes and plays in the country. And that's what we enjoy so much. The hospitality, hospitality that is uh, enshrined on us through no. traveling into India is something so unique and so special. Well, it was, a, it was almost a Freudian mistake there because you could have said hostility. And, <laughs> and, and when you're out batting, there's a bit of that too. <laughs> there is a lot of that. A lot of that. Things can happen so quick. Yes. Okay. Well, the players are now lined up in the middle and we're about to go to the anthem. So bear with us as I pause.
This, folks, is the real deal. You can hear it, I'm sure, across the airwaves. The excited Indian crowd, the end of the anthems, bringing that roar that gets hearts pumping and brings hairs to the back of the neck. What a thing before us. The third test match, Ahmedabad and the new stadium, the venue, two fine teams, changes everywhere you look. But the big news of the morning is that Joe Root has won the toss and England will bat first in their commentary seats and ready to fire on all cylinders are Darren Goff, Kevin Peterson and Neil Manthorpe. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mark. Just moments away from uh, what is a hugely anticipated occasion. And uh, there's, it, it is a, an occasion uh, that um, the, the, the national pride that India feels in, the, in this stadium and I mean, it's really become a, a centerpiece of, uh, of Indian nationalism really in many ways. It was deliberately expanded when they, uh, when they rebuilt the stadium which was originally built in 1983, but when they uh, knocked it down and rebuilt it, they originally they uh, uh, intentionally went for 110,000 to surpass the MCG. They wanted, they believed that they are the biggest cricket nation in the world, and they are, Darren Goff, and they wanted something that reflected that. Uh, absolutely superb. I mean, there's so much talk of this stadium all, all week, and from when I, uh, I played, uh, obviously, um, over there in the World Cup way back in 96, uh, believe it or not. Um, so um, it's totally different to when I was there and I think they spent a lot of money in the region haven't they building hotels and everything uh, before uh, they actually went and built this magnificent stadium and we're all excited to see now what the pitch does because it's alright having a great stadium but we all want to see what the actual pitch is like which it was interesting um, to hear Mark Nicholas in his uh, preview talking about the fact that it is established but my understanding is that some of the pitches at least have been relayed um, that, that they obviously they when they knocked the stadium down, they didn't destroy the, <laughs> the ground <laughs> itself. But my understanding is that some of the pitches are relayed. Um, but this is a red soil pitch, and you've been <laughs> doing your homework on red soil and uh, black soil pitches as we welcome our listeners on TalkSport, who will be joining us for the first ball of this uh, third test match. This is a red soil pitch, Goffey, which will well, turn, but not as much as black soil pitches. Well, the honour of red soil, the bonding strength of soil particles is greater than the black soil or clay, just to give you a little clue, if you understand that. Um, I've no idea. Uh, and pitches with red soil topping deteriorate. Listen this, this is the most important thing. <laughs> quicker. <laughs> deteriorate quicker. So um, it's a good toss to win. It's a good start, Kevin Peterson. Uh, yes, good morning. It absolutely is a good start. But it's how you also play on those surfaces that uh, I think counts uh, the most. Yes, the surface is something, but it's how you play on the surface. And uh, Crawley, well, he's up. He's on strike. Here's Ishant Sharma. First ball of the test match and it's full and wide outside Whoa. the off stump and it bounces. <laughs> Wow. wow. Well, Rishabh Pant's taken that. He thought he was going to take it, fingers pointing up in front of his face, and it's just suddenly taken off, and he's taken it above his head. I'll tell you what, go back a yard, son. Go back a yard. Well, there's your answer. Lovely carry, lovely seam position. Ishan Sharma playing in his under the test match. Just stood a little bit close. The ball kept climbing, didn't it? Yeah, it kept climbing. It certainly did. And, uh, and you look at both teams, and you look at the both setups, and you look at who they've picked. Somebody's got this horribly wrong. Bumra, Ishan Sharma, the two seamers from India. Here is Ishan Sharma in his 100th test match and he bowls that's full and str str closer to the off stump but still wide enough to be left alone. Uh, and you wouldn't put your money on the tourist. Uh, no, right, and, and, and Archer, Broad and Anderson. So, so England have gone all in on the fast bowlers. We've and seen Stokes. A, yeah, and Stokes. And we've just seen the first ball that's just bounced and gone. And Pant has taken it above his eyes. And then we've seen the wobble. Uh, the wobble seam or the wobble or the swerve after it's past the, uh, the batter and that's something that you see at Lords. So have England got this real good? Have they? Just looking at India's uh, options, they've obviously got the three frontline spinners including Washington Sundar who makes his return to the team. But uh, they've only got the two frontline seamers. Here is Ishant Sharma once more and Zach Crawley steers it into the gully. Two slips gully, backward point, cover mid off, mid on, square leg conventional looking field for uh, Ishant Sharma. The, w the one thing though that Shane Warne always says it's about bounce isn't it for a spinner. He always thought that bowling at the Gabba it was all about bounce. 
Spin was one thing. I don't need to spin a fraction, but it was bounce. So, yes, they've only got two seamers in the Indian team, Ishan Sharma and uh, Jaspreet Bumrah. But Ashwin, Akshar Patel and Sunda, they'll be thinking bounce. They must be thinking bounce. And we've seen so far there is a bit of bounce. Yeah, good uh, carry for Ishan Sharma, who's not the quickest uh, fast bowler around, but uh, he's certainly getting it, this one through. Here he is, bowls to Crawley once more, and again he's just a little wide of the off stump, and uh, Crawley's able to leave it alone. Crawley making his return into uh, the England team after uh, missing the first two test matches after a freak injury, which he slipped on a marble floor outside the change room, landed on his wrist and, and sprained it quite uh, severely. If you're going to get injured, at least try and make it happen with a cricket ball. Anyway, Crawley is back. Dom Sibley opens. Rory Burns is left out. Johnny Bairstow is also back into the team. And uh, Joe Root, Ben Stokes, Ollie Pope, Ben Folks, and Jack Leach, Joffre Archer. One of those will have to bat at eight. England have a longer tail than they've become accustomed to. And Broad and Anderson, Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson, return the thousand wicket duo 1100 wicket duo here's Seashant once more and that keeps very low outside the off stump harmless as far as Crawley is concerned but the first ball of the over has been taken by Rishabh Pant above his head and that one's bounced twice well what we've seen al already is a little uneven bounce uh, in this pitch we've seen uh, two paced and this is just the first over of the test match so encouraging signs uh, <laughs> For England, it if you want to consider that, and that's without a run on the board. <laughs> Listen, I always believe it's encouraging. Pitch. It's encouraging if it's straight and you're seeing that. That actually has absolutely no bearing on the impact of this game and on the batter's mindset. Anything can happen wide out of off stump, and you actually don't bother. Here is Ishant once more, and Crawley does play it, and he played it two out of the six deliveries in the first over. England winning the toss, choosing to bat first, as Virat Kohli said he would have done. The Indian captain and the first over has been bowled by Ishan Sharma, England none for none. It, it does Kev, but uh, one of the things we've seen throughout this series is but Ashwin has opened the bowling many times for India already in this series. He's took a lot of wickets and if he's bowling that line outside off stump and it keeps roll, uh, keeps low with spin, um, he's in the ball game. And, and it will yeah. be interesting because you're, you're right Kev, I mean somebody's got it horribly wrong this test match, whether it be England or whether it be India. Absolutely. We're going to see Jasper Brummer. He's uh, going to bowl this uh, first over, uh, sharing the ball. So it's going to be seam, seam. We're not going to see Ashwin straight away. We may see him the third over after <laughs> seeing that, uh, that little bit of, uh, I suppose, up and down. But yeah, in terms of batsman's mindsets, anything that happens outside as a right-hander, outside your right eye, you can actually put to bed very, very quickly. It's the last ball of the over that really, really made me watch with intent because that was on off stump that's top of off stump that's maybe fifth stump it's where you tell your bowlers to bowl and that's where you want even bounce Jasprit Boomer then rested for the second test match he's going to bowl the first over from uh, the pavilion end and there's good carry again it's left alone outside the off stump but uh, Rishab Pant takes that around midriff height uh, Kevin it was really interested to hear Virat Kohli at the toss talking about the inclusion of Washington Sundar he spoke about his lower order batting and the importance that that brought to the team. And I just wonder, actually, if Hardik Pandya, who's a seam bowling all-rounder, had been bowling fit, then he might have might have gone for that. But it just sounded like he was interested in Washington Sunder as much for his batting as for his uh, for, for the, his role as a third spinner. Jasprit Bumrah, two slips in a gully, back with point, cover mid-off, mid-on, same field as Ishant Sharma, left alone again outside off stump. Different players, Hardik Pandya, compared to Washington Sunder. Yes, clearly one bowls, one, uh, bowls, one bowls fast, one uh, bowls spin. Hardik Pandya is also a prodigious hitter of the ball. I'm not so sure about in Test cricket how Hardik Pandya would fare up. I mean, in T20 cricket, he gives it an absolute belting. Not to say that guys that give it an absolute belting can't succeed and play the situation better, thinking that they've got more time in Test Match Cricket. But, again, Goffey's just said there, somebody's got this wrong. <laughs> Who's got this wrong? Here is uh, Jasprit Bumrah once again. He walks, stutters, and then he's into his no more than three or four pace run-up. It's left alone outside the off stump again by Dom Sibley. 
Nine, well, nine balls gone, none for none. Well, there is encouraging signs if you're a uh, pace bowler. Um, and I can see why Stuart Broad, obviously, and Jimmy Anderson both wanted to play in this test match already. It's been good carry to the wicket keeper. There is a bit of a wobble going on with the pink ball. Um, and you can tell that they obviously think it's going to um, assist the faster bowlers. It's, I think it's the, probably the second. We end up very often in this series seeing three slips in place. And we have got three slips in place at this moment in time. Bumber in once again outside the off stump. Way swing there. Swung again. It went even further off the pitch. Um, just to confirm what Kevin Peterson is saying is that one team has picked one spinner and the other team has picked three spinners. So what we can say, Kevin Peterson, is that whichever team has got it wrong might have it less wrong as the game goes on. It's really weird to try and explain and to try and understand, isn't it? Because we're trying to figure our way and after watching a couple of deliveries, you're trying to see who has got it right and who has got it wrong. Um, a third slip has been added now for Jasper Boomer after that ball swung quite noticeably away uh, from the right-hander. This one is a little too wide and it's left alone outside the off stump. And time will certainly tell. What we've seen so far, and Goffey's quite right, is that a couple of balls have now carry quite well to to the keeper but the ball been outside the off stump well outside the off stump there's only been a couple of deliveries that the batsmen have had to play and those will be the interesting deliveries that both opening batsmen will be looking at you're thinking about their off stump guarding their off stump always wanting to be tight on off stump especially at the start of a test you want to be tight on off stump you want to be coming forward you want to be hitting the ball to extra cover last ball of the second over oh big in swinger Prodigious, it very well played by Dom Sibley, but uh, that was that's just gone uh, swung half a foot at least. Two overs gone, no runs on the board. Jared Kimber is our analyst. Uh, just on the all rounder thing, the interesting thing about Sundar and Ashwin being in the same side is that they're both very tall off spinners, um, and it doesn't make as much sense to have both of them in being that there's even you know less uh, left handers in the top order for uh, England than there has been in other games so it's, that's an interesting thing just on this inconsistent bounce uh, this pitch is already all over the place I don't need to tell you guys you've seen a couple of big ones but balls bouncing between six and eight meters uh, looking at it at the moment it's random whether it's going to go beneath the level of the stumps or above the level of the stumps and generally on the first day of a test match there's like a hard line in the middle anyone who hits it on one side is going to bounce over anyone on the other one is going to go low that is not happening at all not even close there's a two meter range here is uh, Ishan Sharma for his second over, the third of the innings, and that's played defensively by Crawley again, straight back to the bowler. But here we've seen again a ball that is actually on the line of off stump or just outside off stump where the bounce looks like it's okay. So all the in, uh, the, well, the bounce from our wide outside off stump, yes, has been inconsistent for sure. However, everything that has been straight, and that's all that the batsmen are interested in, seems to me has been okay. The three balls or the four balls that they've hit, the bounce has been perfect. Well, I hope so. It's only the third over of the test match. Absolutely <laughs> right. But when you start talking about ball going all over the place and describing a wicket where the ball's going up, the ball's going down, there's wobble, there's bounce, there's all sorts, you think that it's hard to bat on. But to calm it and to bring it into the batsman's perspective, as a batsman... He shan't. Full delivery, drivable, and he does. He push drives, does uh, Zach Crawley. He doesn't really make contact like he would have wanted. It's to mid on, no run. As a batsman, you're only interested in what's hitting the wickets or only interested in what you can score on. As a bowler, I'd be licking my lips because if you, normally you go to India, you don't expect to get carry to the wicket keeper. You don't expect to have three slips in place with a new ball. Um, having been there on a few occasions and this test match already we've seen a little bit of uh, like I said two paced a bit of an uneven bounce yes it is been from wide at this moment in time but we have got slips in place looking for that catch here is uh, Ishan Sharma once more bowls in swinger and uh, it's a flicked away by Zach Crawley I think off the pad I don't think it'll be a run credited to the batsman it's uh, a leg by confirmed by umpire Nitin Menon and a no ball as well <laughs> a leg by no ball <laughs> there goes last orders free hit here we go no there's no free hits is there in, uh, in test match cricket it would be fun if there was a free hit quite a big overstep and, and that's actually something that Ishan Sharma has done throughout his career I remember playing against him 
most of his career, first, certainly for the first five or six years of his career, and he did. He bowled a lot of, lo a lot of no balls, but it's his 100th test match. How good is that, eh? For a fast bowler in India to have toiled away for as long as Ishan Sharma has toiled away, and he's just an unsung hero. He comes into a test match, out of a test match, into a series, into an out of a series. He's an unsung hero there in India. He really produces, and you all know who he is. With the long hair, the big Adam's apple. <laughs> Here is Ishan Bowles. Back of the length, edge taken by Rohit Sharma at second slip. Ishan has the early breakthrough, extra bounce. Not so sure that Dom Sibley did terribly much wrong. He's just pushed forward, it's bounced, it's hit the outside edge, and the uneven bounce, and it had been wide of off stump. Pitches can, well, they often calm down, don't they, after the first sort of hour. I'm talking about day games. This has already been in the sun all day. Yeah, you don't know how long it's been covered as well. So you don't know whether it was covered all the way up until lunchtime. Some groundsmen like to keep it covered, especially with the temperatures, 30, 35 degrees. Um, but I don't see anything that makes me worry as a batsman, even with that dismissal. You see that in... London, you see that in uh, South Africa, you see that dismissal in New Zealand, you'll see it in the Caribbean, you'll see it all over. Caught at second slip, pushing at a ball on off stump early on in your innings. You want to get back to ball, that's what you want to feel comfortable as. If your timing is out, you're facing a bowler who's well, played 100 test matches. If your timing is out, he's going to get you. Beautifully caught by Rohit Sharma at second slip. He's pushed at a ball where he maybe should have played it a little bit later. He should have maybe just watched it a little bit closer. And he'd still be batting there. It's not something. And I mean, I'm just trying to tell the listener or trying to advise the listener or help the listener that this is not a minefield by any stretch of the imagination from what I've seen. All the balls on and around off stump have been easily hittable. Well, it's a good, it's a good point. I'm, we're not saying it's an absolute minefield and the ball's gone over. But there's a little bit of encouragement there. And you would see it anywhere else in the world. I think the surprise to us is that we don't often see it in India, do we? Let, let's be honest about it. But the encouraging signs, if you're a fast bowler, where if you can get a nick, it's going to carry to slip. In the first two test matches, it wasn't the point, was it? I mean, you're more likely to get a wicket caught short mid-wicket on the, on the two pitches we played, but at least slips are in play. It's a good test match pitch so far. And there is a short mid-wicket in. There's two slips of gully, short mid-wicket, square leg, mid-on, mid-off, cover for Johnny Bairstow who was England's second highest run scorer in the two test matches in Sri Lanka before being given his uh, his leave of absence his uh, giving the, the two test matches off he went home apparently the uh, it was quite a journey <laughs> to get home and back anyway it's Johnny Bairstow first delivery here's Ishant Sharma to him full and wide outside the off stump and Bairstow leaves his First delivery uh, alone. You're listening to commentary of the third test between India and England on TalkSport <laughs> 2 with the Times and Sunday Times, whose uh, correspondents are the well-known former England captains Mike Atherton and Sir Alistair Cook. And there's another no ball from Ishant Sharma. That's even bigger than the last one. They've there's bowled a lot of no balls this uh, test series, yeah, haven't they, yeah. India, whether it be Ashwin, whether it be Sharma. I'm sure they're bowling coaches on their case. Well, that no ball debate just goes on and on and on and on and on, doesn't it? Why do you fast bowlers do it? What's wrong with you? Spinners have been doing it for India this mm. series. Mm. Everyone's bowled a no ball. Here is Ishant Sharma again, and uh, that's on the back foot, pushed away by Bairstow. Yeah, incredibly, only one bowler in the first two test matches didn't bowl a no ball and that was Don Best but is Everybody that, is that also because of the new technology that they're starting to employ now whereby I mean that should have been around for years shouldn't it the umpire should have only been looking at the batsman let me make a decision down the bottom let me just focus on 22 23 24 yards away not focus on two yards away and 23 24 yards away so maybe it's just the new technology that's just starting to catch people out you would have bowled so many more Goff and Harmison reading a paper over there if the third umpire had been calling them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with DRS, we'd have got a lot more wickets as well. He would have also got a lot more turned down. I know what you were like, you bowlers. Ishan Sharma, England, three for one. is a big in-swinger, and that's very well played by Johnny Bairstow. We've seen, we've seen more swing in the first 2.5 yeah. overs than we've seen in the first two test matches. It still gives me excitement when I see a bit of swing and a bit of seam 
uh, in any pitch, wherever you are in the world. I don't want to see a green top. I don't want to see the ball going all over the shop. I don't want to see a ridiculously dry pitch where it's going through the top on the first hour of a test. I want to see good test weeks where you get good carry with the new ball and spin as the game goes on. And so far, what we've seen here is encouragement to the faster bowler. It's a test of the batsman's technique, as Kev said. And so far, Dom Sibley fell short of what's expected, and that's why he's back in the hutch. But it brings Johnny Bairstow to the crease after a short break at home, walking his dog. He's now back out there with a couple of net practice, and he's back in the test. And it is Bairstow on strike to uh, face the last ball of the third over. Here is Ishant Sharma, once again an in-swinger which starts too wide and is left alone by uh, Johnny Bairstow. Well, at lunchtime you'll be able to hear an interview that Steve Harmison did with Ben Stokes in which he said that the pink ball looks like it's covered in pink nail varnish and there'll be swing bowlers all around the world saying, bring it on. Another word from uh, Darren Goff, Kevin Peterson, and then it'll be Andrew McKenna for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, Kevin, when you talk about... Um, you, you're kind of from that generation now where you played test matches, you play games with a big break in between with not much practice, how is it? Do you, do you feel you're, you need to be out there in the middle playing week in week out or can you just do with a short break? It depends how good your last game was <laughs> you're only as good as your last game they say and it's so true, Johnny Besto, yes he may have been away for a couple of weeks but he had a fabulous tour of Sri Lanka fabulous, he played so beautifully there. his foot mo uh, work was so good his power hitting was good his defense was spectacular and that's what you need in the subcontinent you need a real good solid defense if you're happy with your defense you'll be a happy at home you'll be happy wherever you are Bumrah to start the fourth over right arm over and that is a straightish ball there's going to be work by Crawley through the onside it's going to be the first runs off the bat of the innings and it's all the way through uh, wide mid on for four and Zach Crawley is underway back into the side with the boundary England seven for one well that was a good shot wasn't Beautiful. it Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. It was full from Bumla. He tried to swing it away. It ended up being straight, and he's just punched a little check drive through mid wicket with a straight bat. I mean, if you think about timing a cricket ball, you think about the shot that you've hit the best in your career. Zach Crawley wouldn't have played a better stroke. Three slips in the gully waiting as Bumra goes in. That's wide of uh, off stump and it swings further away. Rishabh Pant actually has to dive in front of first slip to take it. So there's a bit of bit in this for everybody. Seven for one, England. They won the toss. They made four changes. If you are only just uh, joining us, uh, Burns, Lawrence, Stone, and Moen Ali, the uh, four to uh, miss out as Anderson, Archer, Bairstow, and Crawley came into the side. Two changes for India. Jasper Bumrah and Washington Sundar in for uh, Siraj and Kuldeep. So uh, changes for both sides. Crawley waits as Bumrah goes in again, turns this on the onside, up to a mid-on where Ashwin is, can't prevent a single. And Crawley is looking very busy at the crease already, rotating the strike, England eight for one. I tell you, we've just seen a couple of replays of that boundary that Crawley hit. You ask Sack Crawley in 10 years' time, in 10 years' time you ask him what's the best shot that he's ever played in his career or name your top five shots that you've played in your career that makes you feel settled and makes you feel at home in an innings that shot that he's just played two balls ago was right up there solid in line he didn't push at it he waited for the ball and he just caressed it through the onside purely magnificent not bad for a bloke who's not played for a couple of weeks wow <laughs> well that answers your question yeah Johnny Bairstow then, fifth ball of his innings, and he will settle in, with Bumrah bowling from the Adani end, Bairstow waits, three slips and a gully behind him along with wicketkeeper Pants, in goes Jasper, oh it's an edge from Bairstow is there, no it lands just short of Pants anyway. Jasper it's immediately turning round to uh, look at the standing umpire Anil Chowdhury, just to confirm to him in his mind, was there an edge or not? But there was certainly a, a bit of a fiddle at that one from Johnny Bairstow, Goffey. Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, um, it's going to be difficult for the keeper. What we've seen so far with a ball just moving around after it passes the bat. But a good seam position from Bumrah. A bit of a wobble seam. We can't quite tell from the pictures whether he did nick it. But we'll soon find out. Here we go. Nah. Nowhere near it. About a centimetre or so. Nowhere near it. Good delivery, though. 
Bumra goes in again. Besto from the crease is playing it up on the uh, offside. No run. Five balls of the uh, fourth over. Johnny Bairstow is the man facing England. Eight for one in this pink ball day-night test match. The third test of this series. Every ball of the series, of course, exclusively live on TalkSport 2. One Day Internationals and the T20s as well. It's all here on TalkSport 2. Wicket keepers hate it when it does that, don't they? When it, after it passes the bat and it just swings the other way. It's it didn't help that he died on him as well. Bumrah goes in, outside the off stump. That one doesn't do anything and it's straight through to Rishabh Pant. Waist high to end the over as if to say, well, what was all the fuss about earlier on? Four overs gone on TalkSport 2, England 8 for 1. If you think it's difficult for the wicket keeper, what about the slips as well? When it starts, when they do nick it and it does go uh, after they've nicked it. So uh, people tend to struggle. I remember playing in test matches where that's happened and it happens at Lords a lot and to left-handers when they nicked it people found it very difficult for some reason more against the left-hander than they do against the right-hander it's a horrible position to be in when the ball's zipping around like that yeah they worry don't they worry about broken fingers keepers really worry especially at Lords you're quite right it's always something that's talked about before that the wobble the wobble after it passes the bat Ishant is in to start a new over solidly forward is Zach Crawley and there is no run I'll throw another little one in. We're just looking at the pictures. Now, look, there's 50-odd there's thousand people going to be in this stadium later, which is only half full. But an awful lot of the seats are red, and the ball that they're playing with is quite a sort of deepish pink. That might just sort of throw it in there as well, because we talk about at Lords, people picking up the ball out of the brickwork of the pavilion. I don't know if it will have an effect, but it's certainly something to keep an eye on. Oh, I love that excuse. I couldn't catch a cold in the middle of winter. <laughs> I love that excuse. Blame the seats. I always blame the seats. But the, but but the, but it's full. But it's full. Now that there's one seat. It came out of that seat. It was definitely that seat. Ishant is in outside of off stump, and Zach Crawley has nothing to do with that. Allows it through to Richard Pant. Oh, you'll find anything. You, you batsman. You know you, you have find to anything. find. Not 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 you batsman. Just you blokes who couldn't catch. <laughs> well, there's also that that situation where. A gnat will wave its wing behind the bowler's arm. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. Can you just just wait a minute? Yeah. I'll tell you what. In England versus India, Tendulkar. Goodness me. Sachin, you literally couldn't... Th it couldn't be anyone moving in the next city behind the side screen. And Tendulkar would be all over it. It was amazing. Just his attention to detail when he batted. An absolute master. Just... It was just... It was like watching a piece of art. Just everything had to be perfect. Ishant goes in, Zach Crawley has nothing to do with that one and again it climbed quite well through to uh, Richard Pan. there is no run, halfway through the fifth over, eight for one I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, uh, so far what we've seen is decent carry from Ishant Sharma and Jasprit Bumrah, they're not ultra quick are they, they're decent pace, similar to probably Anderson and Broad, but when you get Archer bowling on here with the new ball, the pink ball the carry we've got, if it keeps its pace in the pitch, that'll be interesting Absolutely interesting, and, and, and maybe that's what England have seen, and maybe England have read this pitch well. They've gone with Broad, they've gone with Anderson, they've gone with Jofra Archer. They do have Ben Stokes, and we are seeing good carry, good bounce. Ishan Sharma in for the fourth time in the over, right arm over, and that is straight driven by Zach Crawley, back past the bowler. And Zach Crawley has hit two fabulous boundaries in his innings so far. Both pretty much in the V, back past the bowler. And that is the mark of a very, very high-class batsman. He moves to nine, England 12 for one. Absolutely beautiful. Over pitch from Ishan, looking for it to shape in. Crawley again presents the full face of the bat and just punches it down the ground. It's not a full stroke by any stretch of the imagination. It hits the middle of his bat, the sweet spot. And it travels down the ground. Two very encouraging shots for somebody who hasn't played for a few weeks. Absolutely. This brand new venue. It's a, a round bowl. It's, it's a bit like a football stadium in many respects. It sort of reminds you of venues around the world. 
ground playing area. In comes Ishant. Two slips in the gully waiting. It's the inducker. Clipped oh. into the leg side by Zach Crawley. And as quickly as it's arrived, it disappears through that wide mid on position again. It's the second time he's hit one there. Zach Crawley moves into double figures. Glorious, glorious shot. England 16 for one. Wow. Come to my side. I mean, it looked like he almost picked that out of the hand of Ishant Sharma. We know he's got wristy. He picked the in swinger. It's absolutely a good delivery, great line on off stump, would have hit middle and off, but he's flicked it through mid-wicket, absolutely timed it uh, for another four, another boundary. There D is, but you can see that the India, you can have a look and, and we see the replays, Ishant knows, he had a short mid-wicket catching, he moved his short mid-wicket out because the ball didn't swing the previous ball, whereas he's got that ball to swing and it would have gone straight to short mid-wicket who has moved back about five metres. Ishant in over the wicket. Crawley works this one through square leg. It's going to be Shubman Gill who uh, sets off after this one. They take one. Gill uh, misfields a little bit as he retrieves, sends it back in. So they will take a couple. That is the over complete. Uh, Zach Crawley has gone to 15. England 18 for one here on TalkSport 2. The thing for Zach Crawley as well, it must be a bit of a relief, Kev, because in Sri Lanka... Um, he, he didn't have a great time of it in Sri Lanka and he was when he were in he was always facing spin now we all know with Zach Crawley he's better against pace than he is against spin so for, the, for him to be facing two seamers with a new ball it's probably a relief that's where the test comes in the subcontinent doesn't come against facing the seamers so the first half an hour of this test match has been very good from Zach Crawley very very good but it's when Akshar Patel comes on, when Akshar starts to deliver what he delivers. But it's not something he needs to worry about right now. It's still Bumrah. 18 for one after five overs then. Johnny Bairstow is on strike. There are three slips in a gully for him. A point. Mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. And Bumrah is going to head in for his third over. Right arm over, he's in. And Besto has gone across his uh, stumps, actually, and it takes him on the thigh pad, trickles out to uh, square leg. And they... Uh, well, there's half an appeal from the, uh, the Indians, realising it's um, not going to trouble the stumps too much. They, they bail out on that. It is a uh, leg by. Steve Harmison has uh, come in as Goffey and Kevin Peterson move out of the, uh, the co-commentators' chairs. Well, no alarms yet, Steve Harmison. We were all wondering about pink ball and this pitch. How would they combine? There's no real horror show so far. No, good morning, Mac. I guess good morning, everyone. It's been, I think it looks as though it's a, it's a very, very good, it's a decent cricket wicket from the first five overs that I've seen so far. In goes Jasprit to uh, Crawley, outside portion of the bat. It's taken at uh, Gully on the bounce and uh, played with soft hands by Zach Crawley and there's no problem there. I think if you're a big tall seamer or a quick bowler, you hit a good length and you bowl a, you know, in a channel in a round off stump, there's re something there, there's a little bit of reward for it, touch an element of swing, uh, not consistent swing which will you know, keep the batters honest, um, but from a batsman's point of view the ball seems to be coming onto the bat, if you let the ball come to you um, and if the ball is slightly offline you can score and it's not it's not the typical turgid uh, Indian wicket where you feel as though you're not going to get value. I think you're going to get value for your shots here. Bumra is in. It's on the drive. Zach Crawley through the covers. And that is going to be a retrieval mission for one of the fielders because that is another boundary for Zach Crawley. He's playing beautifully back into the side after his wrist injury. And that is his fourth boundary of the innings already. He's got all four in the England innings as they move to 23 for one. Absolutely. They're exactly there. Over pitch by Bumra. Crawley feels as though he can score he gets on the front foot he just leans back a touch but I think if that's a little bit questionable but I tell you what fantastic start by Zach Crawley I agree with what Kevin said the ball down the ground his first scoring shot that went for four was an absolute beautiful shot and will give him so much confidence going into into what is his his, his Indian the, the Indian part of this this leg of his career Bumra is in outside the off stump. Zach Crawley has nothing to do with that. And there is no run. There were concerns coming into this because um, the uh, previous home uh, Indian pink ball test match was the shortest in Indian test match history. The whole match only lasted 161.2 overs. So just over two and a bit days. Um, but in fairness, that was on a completely different stadium. 
and how can I put it? It was against Bangladesh, which maybe didn't surprise you too much. India actually posted quite a good score in that as Crawley allows this to uh, go past the uh, off stump and there uh, is no run. So India actually won that by an innings by posting a big first inning score. But I think we all hoped we wouldn't get a repeat of that, Harmy. And, and it appears we, we're not going to because that was a match that only 28 wickets fell and 27 of them were to seem. So it wasn't a spin-dominated match. Yeah, we're, we're a long way from seeing what, you know, the, the end of this, this test match and the way it's going to turn out. But first signs have been quite good that the ball is doing a little bit and the surface looks quite good. Jasper is in, turned on the onside by Crawley through square leg and that again is going to be another boundary. Zach Crawley is making the most of this, he's playing some beautiful, beautiful shots but as soon as the Indian bowlers err uh, line and length, Zach Crawley is whipping it away. England now 24 for 1 on TalkSport 2 after 6 overs. You're listening to commentary of the third test between England, India and England on TalkSport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times. Their cricket team is writing with an edge. And Our analyst list is Jared Kimber. Sorry, homie. Sorry, uh, Matt. Just on, on Bears, though, uh, he averages 10 in Test Match Cricket when the ball is bowled on the stumps by a seam bowler. Um, the overall average is 14, so it's not like other batsmen are doing that much better, but there's, that's a big drop-off. That's almost 33% uh, worse than, than other players. Uh, so far, they've only got one ball anywhere near the stumps in the right area, but that, there was a leg by at the start of that last over, and Boomer put his hand up because he knew he'd just got it wrong, and you could see Bairstow had fallen across. It's just that Boomer got it a little bit too straight, so they are going to attack those stumps. Yeah, and I, I think Johnny, to combat that, I was going to say during that last over when Johnny was on strike, Johnny's moved right onto off stump and he's basically saying anything that is on, on off stump or on the stumps I can open up the leg side off I go straight and you really go you know, with the in swing because they're both in swing bowlers they're not away swing bowlers so you'll be thinking anything outside my sort of my right eye line and anything outside off stump I, I can potentially leave anything else that's coming in here I can score off Akshar Patel is into the attack left on around the wicket first ball Johnny Best though taking on the pad out LBW He's going to review that straight away. He's not happy with the decision, but the ball went clattering into the pad. Akshar straight into the game, and we're going to have umpire Shamshuddin into the game because England have sent this upstairs for the review. Theoretically, they're 27 for one. It's a fair delivery, spin vision, please. So we're going to start the process. Well, Johnny Bairstow made a signal as if to say he thought it was going to be a left side. Yep, roll it nice and slow. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Roll it forward. Go to the back, please. Well, he's definitely not hit it. Back line when the ball passes the back. Ball tracking, please. So now we go to ball tracking. Pitching outside off. Impact in line. Gets hitting on field umpire on screen, please. Nitin, stay with your original decision. You are on screen. Give out, please. England are 27 for two. Johnny Besto out LBW to Akshar Patel. The first ball that he's bowled in the match. And Johnny Besto stay lasts only nine deliveries. LBW to Akshar is 27 for two. Well, when I first saw this, I thought, out, straight away. Then Johnny's gone to, DR, to DRS very, very quickly. So you, you, you automatically think, right, he's hit this. Johnny's must have hit it because he's gone to DRS. But straight away, then he pointed to uh, Zach Crawley as, as if he was indicating it's gone down leg side, um, which obviously it hadn't. But what Johnny Bairstow has actually done is his bat's come down. It's hit the bottom of his pad. And the ball's, because of that, the ball, the bat in his hand has just turned a touch. He's missed it. It's hit his pad. He looked absolutely dead from the naked eye um, when I first saw it. That's what's happened. England 27 for two. And England's captain, Joe Root, is walking out here now again in this position of firefighting. He made 218 in the first innings of the first match, 40 in the second innings. As he was man of the match in the England win, and then 6 and 33 in the second of the test matches in Chennai. Delighted to say that the former Indian batsman Akash Chopper is part of the commentary team once again and joins us now. Akash, great start from India's point of view. 
fantastic mate uh, good morning to you and uh, everybody who's tuned in to listen to us uh, a dream start because uh, winning the toss is a significant advantage but then uh, uh, it's only half the job done you got to once again go ahead and score a lot of runs uh, india has got a fantastic start and uh, uh, truth be told that this pink ball has done a little more as compared to the red ball or uh, pink ball has swung a little more there has been some amount of variable bounce already that we have seen on the surface uh, uh, so removing two batsmen uh, as early as uh, this i think uh, india will be mightily pleased absolutely joe root in inside the seventh over of the innings Joe Root settles in over his back, left arm around Kazakshaw and it's flicked into the leg side and not far away from the short leg fielder Shubman Gill. Shubman Gill is in front of square, that goes just backward of square and Steve Harmison hands went into the air straight away. Yeah, it looked as though there was he was looking for that, that fielder on the leg side and it'll be interesting in between the overs to ask Akash what... Uh, he thinks on the t who he thinks has got it right has Virat Kohli got it right or has Joe Root got it right, right with team selection Akshar around the wicket Root comes forward and again there's hands in the air as that's hit towards Shubman Gill did that land just short of the short leg fielder uh, because we've got spin bowler on don't don't look too much into the fact that it, because India have played two seamers and they've got a spinner on from the sixth over that a seventh over that Virat Kohli's team selection has got it right the reason why Akshar's bowling it's actually comes in and Joe Root leaves an arm ball that just misses his off stump. My goodness, it's everyone a goldfish at the moment. This is like being at the fair. Yeah, everything's happening quickly. But just to finish off that, Axar's bowling because the two seamers haven't bowled very well on this surface. He's not bowling because it's spinning. He's bowling because his two seamers haven't bowled that well. Akshar is in. Joe Root solidly gets the middle of the bat on that one. Hits it out to uh, short extra cover where Rohit Sharma misfields. And Joe Root thinks of a single, but there isn't one there. It is all happening. Boy, the, the roar of the crowd. You know, the government has, has given us a crowd in what June, mere June time in this country, in England. But the roar of the crowd. It's a completely different game in India when the crowd's in, the, in, in there. Joe Root deep in his crease on this occasion is turning into the onside he will take one and we'll come back for a second as Bumra will field at mid wicket the first over of, of Akshar Patel the first over of spin he's got one for two at the end of the uh, that over England after seven overs on Talksport 2 they won the toss and batted they're 29 for two well Akash what do you think is it is it Joe Root who's got selection right or is it Virat Kohli England have gone three seamers and one spinner <laughs> no depth to their bat and a bit of a tail and then you've got India uh, with three spinners and like I said I, I think the spinners have come on Axar's come on because the two seamers haven't bowled that well this morning uh, well end will always justify the means uh, but I do feel that India should have played a third seamer uh, this pitch uh, well when you play with a pink ball there is dew that's going to be a factor there is uh, that twilight period where you need some extra pace in the air uh, I think that India didn't have to worry about their batting order or the depth in their batting uh, with Ashwin scoring a century already. Uh, so, India should have played another fast bowler in place of uh, Washington Sundar. That's interesting. The Indian expert in the team, Jasper, is starting you over. Crawley plays out on the offside. Our Indian expert is saying that England got it more right than India. So, for all those people on social media asking the question, um, Akash Chopra telling us here on TalkSport 2, he reckons that England got it more right than India did in terms of team selection. Well, the seamer got the first wicket with a, a ball in a, in a good area that bounced for Dom Sibley. And it was, a, could you say it was a poor shot, poor judgment by Johnny Besto? His bat hit his pad and let the ball through from a, a relatively straight ball by Aksar Patel. So, you know, time of the jury's still out on that one. Bumrah for the second ball of this over and it's a play and a miss by Zach Crawley and it's a big booming drive now where did that one come from we've not seen that shot so far this innings it's a play and a miss it's through to Rishabh Pant no run yeah big shot Zach looks as though he's got his, uh, his, his beans are going here he's got a few off the middle of the bat he's got one wide of the off stump a little touch a touch of a waist swing which is not not normal from from Jasper Brummery somebody who just take want to take the ball into the right hand as off stump but a little bit of a weird shape and Zach Crawley's, uh, Crawley's chucked the kitchen sink it that but good signs for England for, for Crawley he feels as though the confidence is high two in a gully waiting as Bumra goes in it's the in ducker Crawley turns on the onside and there's uh, no run uh, Akash just uh, he's finished his first spell already but just a quick word on Ishant Sharma becoming only the second Indian seamer to play in a hundred test matches 
Well, uh, it's it's commendable. It's remarkable for an Indian to play a hundred test match or an Indian fast bowler because uh, just the conditions are so grueling. Uh, you don't uh, get good conducive fast bowling conditions. You run in every day and get nothing out of it. Uh, so for him to last a hundred test matches, it's phenomenal. Jasper is in and Crawley is uh, playing forward. Back to the bowler and there is no run. And for anyone wondering who the first to make that, of course, the great Kapil Dev was the first Indian seamer to play 100 tests. 29 for two, England. Don't forget, of course, TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Got more football than anyone else. We continue with another two live games this evening on TalkSport 2 from 6 o'clock. It's Brentford against Sheffield Wednesday in the Championship. Well, over on TalkSport, it's Manchester City against Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Champions League. TalkSport 2 bringing you the cricket as Bumrat goes in, takes Crawley on the pad. He's going down the leg side and there is no run so uh, get the TalkSport app and that way you can just uh, sweep left uh, and uh, choose which station you want to listen to and you can have the choice of the commentary and then flip it back onto TalkSport 2 for the morning so you're ready with us in time for the first ball it is 9am starts for this feels an awful lot more civilised doesn't it rather than that 4 o'clock stuff uh, far more civilised and we've got ourselves a cracking game we are back to the early stuff for the fourth test of the series so this is the uh, the one-off, if you like. Bumra goes in, and Crawley's just uh, riding the bounce on this one, dropping it into the uh, offside. So eight overs are gone. Some more thoughts from uh, Harmi and uh, Akash, and I'll make way as Mark Nicholas takes over the ball by ball. And yeah, it was a. That was a little bit what Kevin Peterson was talking about earlier, Dom Sibley. Dom Sibley played the ball out in front of himself, and that ball there off Jasper Brummer to Zach Crawley, confidence high, tall man, let the ball come to him. And it was a little bit of French cricket, just dropped the ball in and, 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 and rolled it down to, to slip on the you know, two bounces in. But Akash, what about the, the spin option coming in early? You know, Aksar Patel, not a big spinner. Are they trying to use the lacquer on the pink ball just to try and skid it onto the batsman's off stump? Oh, and, oh. and also to just to see whether there is uh, some assistance available off the surface. That's a forward defensive stroke from Joe Root, who looked very confident in it. He didn't look confident in the last over. His judgment of what to play and leave alone, even against Akshay Patel, was difficult, which just shows you, however good you are, starting is uh, difficult. He's back this time, gets a thick inside edge and will get off strike. He has a couple. Crawley has uh, 21. Uh, we'll come back to Akash at the end of the over, but let, let's just focus here on the problems of facing this lacquered pink ball that may well skid on a bit. Root looked more hurried on the back foot there than I've seen him probably in any of the test matches in Sri Lanka or Australia. England 30 for two, having won the toss. The men out to Sibley and Bairstow. And uh, now Crawley forward, very relaxed manner. No doubt that Crawley will look to impose himself on the game. He, he felt that he sat in his shell a bit too much in Sri Lanka and learnt from that. He goes nicely forward and defends with a little bit of extra bounce there from Aksha Patel. The ball hitting quite high up on the bat and rolling out onto the offside, but there's no run from it. India nicely animated, certainly buoyed by the crowd. Dick Coley mentioned how the, no crowd in the first match really um, took some of the spice out of his cricket for him but he, a few spectators in the second match he was back and a few more today as Crawley goes forward and defends straight back down the pitch we're seeing a lot of the blade of Zach Crawley's bat and again almost a carbon copy of the ball before though a slightly longer stride end of that over um, 30 for 2 it will come back to Akash I think you, were you finishing an answer Maestro? Because I've got another question, if not. Akash? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm, we were just talking about Dishan Sharma and, of course, uh, the pitch and uh, what to expect. Yes, there is a bit more lacquer. The seam is also a bit more pronounced. Uh, uh, so the introduction of Akshar Patel, the homeboy, he knows this pitch better than anybody else. Uh, born, brought up here, even though it's a new surface. But then uh, on the soil, the, the nature of the pitch, that doesn't change too much. Uh, so uh, that's that's the reason that he was introduced so early in the attack and of course uh, when you play only two fast bowlers 
uh, there is always a tendency of going towards spin a little too early in the piece, and that's what uh, happened. Uh, fortunately, got a wicket as well of Johnny Besto. Yeah, we've got a lot of conjecture about this soil. You know, the old Ahmedabad uh, pitches that I knew, and you obviously knew that. So, what's the soil on this one? One that's more likely to help spin? Yes, and uh, the soil comes from Mumbai. Uh, it's the red soil that. Uh, uh, tends to offer a bit more bounce, a bit more spin, uh, value for shots as well. You'd find that uh, uh, there is decent bounce throughout the course of this test match. And uh, and that's that's just the nature of that red soil. Uh, this is exactly what's used here. Burma bowls back of a length and Root's tucked in behind it. I think the master of the defensive stroke. And Akash, tell me about, uh, just repeat because I only came on in the end of it. You believe that India have not balanced their attack quite right in terms of uh, three spinners and two seamers and that England with four seamers and one spinner have got it closer to right. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, Mark, you heard that right. Yes. Uh, and I say that uh, for two reasons. One, uh, the spinner that India has played, the third spinner is uh, because of the batting that he provides and not his bowling. Because and if that was the case, Washington would have been dropped. Again, route forward, um, defending very comfortably. Seemed to have a lot of time to play that ball from Jasprit uh, Bumrah. Interesting. So, I mean, I know Root can back up as a spinner to Jack Leach. I just hope Jack Leach doesn't seem too much of a, a lone ranger. There'll come a time in the, in the game where he'll have to bowl important overs against big-name players. And it can be a lonely life when everybody's looking to you to take the wickets. But maybe you're right. Maybe the bounce will stay there and the pink ball will move a bit and the England seamers can play a bigger part. Boomer again, that really does fly from a length. That's like a fourth day pitch. Doubtless taking a piece out. It may not have done on this surface, but anywhere else you play in India, that would bounce like that and hit the glove as one hand came off the bat in shock. Yeah, encouragement there for the bowler right on the bottom hand, right on the glove. Joe Fruit, the index finger, just pushed uh, in the air. He just has a little glance at the finger, a glance at the pitch and Jasper Brummer. And possibly this is just the seam. The, the lack is going off the ball. This is the pronounced seam. The ball's maybe just hit the top of the, se the seam and it's spat. And Nature. Crawley was concerned about going from sort of he figured he was going first slip to sort of leg stump at the other end and that's why he nicked a couple in Sri Lanka so he has done a bit of work on that and then in addition he decided that you know in less conditions were almost impossible you you couldn't let them bowl he had to be more prepared to use being no! patched up and to prove it Bumra bangs one into the pitch and Root goes back and across and defends nicely um, yeah, any thoughts on, on those England openers? You open the batting yourself, Akash. You look at them, obviously, objectively from afar. Oh, Akash is gone. OK, there you go. It just shows, you see, you for all the wonders of modern technology, occasionally we don't get it quite right. We had him waiting, we rabbited on and we lost him. Maybe we bored him. <laughs> Talking about batting, yeah. <laughs> that a subject he was uh, close to his heart. Good leave alone outside our stump. Nothing better when you first go in, other than a leg stump half volley, I'd say. Nothing better to be able to watch the ball go by a bit, get used to the light, the bounce, particularly the bounce, I think. You watch it carry through to the keeper. Especially when you've just been wrapped on the gloves as well. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> you want as little contact as possible with the ball, and especially when it's bowled by Jasper Bumra, who bowls a heavy ball, as they say. The pros love to call the one that jars the bottom hand a heavy ball. Here he comes again. And Root goes half forward and plays it so late he almost stuns it down into the gully. Actually, as his bat at 45 degrees straight, but angled at 45, survives the over, 30 for two. England won the toss. The uh, nice ceremonies before play began as uh, dignitaries met the two teams great thing for the Gujarati Cricket Association to have the game back here at test match level and there's a very good chance they'll host the final stages of the IPL too uh, and imagine 110,000 people in here for that uh, you you and Kev go and commentate on the IPL and it's a magnificent a magnificent thing but can you imagine that place IPL semi-final wow what what an atmosphere so, yes, I'm interested they're saying it's the now the biggest uh, the highest capacity in in India because they, they must have taken a few away from Eden Gardens because that was always 110 as well 
I think did they not put a few more seats in, which yeah, then does, yeah, does take yeah, the, yeah, the, the capacity be. down a bit. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, so Come on, we're ready for Aksha Patel with a slip of silly point and a short leg. Very lush green outfield it is. And Crawley goes back and drops his bat down on it at the very last minute. That's that skid. The ball that goes straight on, rushes in at you. And uh, you've got to be very aware of it. He drops his bat down at the last minute. It's a little bit like having a, a third seamer. Because you're not, he's not looking for spin. You... That's a Jaffa. Is the pitch going to spin? Yes. And less than an hour into play, I can tell you categorically the pitch will spin. That is a big spinning, bouncing cricket ball. A little bit slower, Mark, would you say? Yes, I would. Wow. <laughs> Different, certainly, from his bowling in Chennai when he was very direct, fired it into the pitch. That was given a little more air, time to spin, time to grab hold of the surface and react. And now Crawley drives as he said he wanted to, and he drives quite beautifully through straightish extra cover. There are sprawling fielders everywhere, but none of them could do anything about it. So Zach Crawley's moved to 27 with that boundary. Gorgeous stroke. Yeah, beautiful shot. A little bit wider. Again, a little bit slower for Max Patel. Just chucked it a little bit wider, <laughs> having a short leg in, and it's gone through short leg. Rohit Sharma's dived over it at extra cover, and Crawley's got another boundary. Good signs for Zach Crawley and good signs for England the way the opening batsman's playing. Now he defends on the front foot. Uh, you're listening to commentary of the third test between India and England on TalkSport 2. We've told you about that throughout the series. Uh, um, we're with the Times in the Sunday Times, which is a, a great partnership to kick off on. Try it free for one month at thetimes.co.uk as a back goes Crawley and defends on the back foot and then slash cricket offer. So times, the times .co dot uk forward slash cricket offer subscription auto renewals and less cancelled terms and conditions apply of course Crawley again forward defending yeah nice partnership with the Times newspaper group for this series 34 for 2 then 11 gone Crawley 27 route 3 Crawley comes down with those red flushed cheeks of his still so young looking in many ways but mature in so many others a naturally talented all-round sportsman excellent striker of a golf ball good oh, bloke I, uh, good Mark, strong I, family Darren Goff's climbed into a seat go on I'll, before I leave I play golf with him at Goodwood he's good isn't oh he? my god he's good he is good his hands through the golf ball big boom and draw he's got pro's length but you've gone you've gone to a much shorter cut these days yeah a little bit of a short I used to know you and you were pretty long off the tip yeah two but handicapped but he's, nowadays he's a very he's a very very tall wiry my belly's come into it and the, the swing around the around a bit of the <laughs> he has to play with a fade now Armin. he does I know <laughs> yeah. he tees it up low fades it just to get it somewhere near the cut bit. try and try and get a bit more control with the uh, with the old white ball <laughs> on that I'm off see that <laughs> okay, enjoy we're, Darren we're, uh, we're just moving towards the end of the first hour's play now as uh, Ishant Sharma back into the attack to Joe Root and Root leaves it alone outside off stump Ishant in his 100th test match an incredible achievement the more I've thought about it for an Indian quick when, when you and people say ah but his wicket to match ratio isn't impressive well of course he, he's played some test matches where he's only bowled three overs and the spinners have done all the rest <laughs> <laughs> well when, when you've got your uh, the, some of the best spinners uh, in the world who he's played with who are opening the bowling it's very difficult for him to get a bowl isn't it? it it's worth saying as well that in South Africa 12 wickets in every test are taken by seam in India it's 6 so there's a big difference when you're factoring that in uh, those are the two extremes what is it in England then? 10? Uh, I think yeah it's 10 it's a yeah. bit, bit lower than some of the other places Ishant with his beard slightly shorter hair these days that bounces nicely is carried carries through from a good length at about neck height to uh, the wicket keeper Rishabh uh, punt certainly there's enough bounce there to keep uh, I think there's two reasons one the pitch is still fresh and the other is this ball with all that lacquer wrapped around it is probably staying going to stay pretty hard 
It is, and, and, and we can tell there's definitely encouragement for the faster bowlers with the slips that have been in place throughout that first hour. Normally, you wouldn't expect to see that. Well, we haven't seen it in the series, really, except for when England got that big score in the first test and the attack for about five overs, didn't they, with three slips in place. But we've seen it uh, this morning in our middle bed. Um, it's been not easy for the England batsman. Zach Crawley, I think, has played beautifully, by the way. He's played some wonderful, wonderful shots off his legs. He's been very watchful, tried to play the ball as late as possible. Unlike Don Sibley, who probably pushed a little bit hard at one, didn't he, to nick it uh, to slip. I watched Johnny, uh, Zach, yes, sorry, Don Sibley got out, as you, as you rightly say, and, and you watch the speed of his head as he follows the flight of the ball, knowing that the worst is about to happen. Batsmen whose heads spin towards the wicketkeeper or slip have always hit it. It's, it's a nice clue. If you're watching cricket and you wonder if a batsman's hit it, watch his head in the replay. Um, but Johnny Bairstow, well forward, as he was a lot of the time in Sri Lanka when he played the spin pretty well, had his head over outside off stump and the ball down the line of middle stump. And I think that's why he missed it. Otherwise, the reach, the bend of the front leg, was fine, but the fact is he missed the ball and it didn't do much. Spot on. Played for spin, didn't he, as well? Um, first up, thought it was going to spin, it didn't, went straight on. And, and actually, uh, the reason he reviewed it is he thought it was going down. So he that, did, that yeah. gives you an idea what you're talking uh, about. How his, far his head was across to off. Here's Ishan again. And a nice firm drive back to the bowler, but it's saved by. <laughs> And they love it, the crowd, because Ishan's ended on his backside, rolling around, having parried the bouncing ball up in the air as Root punched it back uh, to him. There's no run in it. Just to finish on Bairstow, now tell me, you leave Sri Lanka, you fly home, you spend time away from the game, you come back, you go into pretty tight quarantine, you have a couple of days' practice, you play a test match against a fine team, and you're supposed to find the form you left a month ago in Sri Lanka, hard, hey? Very hard. Some people can do it, some people can't. It's very difficult. Some people like, as individuals, so if you're a sportsman, some people need to bowl or bat every day. Some people can just come in and come out. And I was one of those people. Uh, well, you've got my partnership, my, myself and Caddick. Left alone outside of stump, but slightly nothing he ball, sort of not even much in the action there from Ishand and Root. <laughs> Root smiles not I think because he didn't think much of the ball just because he saw it carry through and, and, and he's encouraged by that. Just quickly sorry on the Caddick thing and, and me is we were two totally different guys. He needed to bowl every single day and he hated it if he had a week off. For me it suited me and my style I could not bowl for a week or two weeks and then come in and do exactly the same job you know what I mean so yeah. There's a difference, and everybody's different in that way. I was the same, Goffey, not bowl for a year or two and just come <laughs> yeah, in. Just, just <laughs> 60 little mile, mile an hour swingers. <laughs> oh, lots of colour today in India. Great to see. It's not quite like it can be, of course, because the ground wouldn't yet even be half full. But that's the aim today, to get it to become half full. Colours of blue and orange and yellow and red. And pink as it's bowled now, and that's a beautiful oh. stroke. Wowee, we love it. Joe Root drives down the ground like the master he is. I tell you, we've seen some good shots, haven't we, in this first hour of play, by the way, whether it be Zach Crawley and then Joe Root, welcome to the party. Wonderful shot, Ishan Sharma trying a different angle, coming round the wicket, loads of experience, decent sh uh, shape with the seam, but full face at about. New Balance will be happy with that. Straight down the ground, four runs from Joe Root. Wonderful. Oh, you want to show that to everybody who want to learn anything about the game. And that is pure. Well, the Joe Root Academy. Yeah, well, there you go. It's as straight as a bat as I think you'd, I, I could ever remember seeing. A bit of shot. Bat was quite new, that face. Either that or he's cleaned it up. New stickers. Is it? New yeah, stickers. New right? stickers. England with Stokes at five, Pope, Folks, <laughs> Stokes and Folks. Lucky Wokes isn't playing. Archer, Leach, Broad, Anderson. So it is Broad who plays today instead of Don Bess. Here's Archer Patel. Bowling now to Crawley who goes forward and just gently leans on the ball. That was beautiful. He just gently leant and the ball hit the, the shut face and ran for a single to mid on where there was no fielder.
Patel is wearing sunglasses. That's out. Caught it slip. No, he missed it. Oh, he drove at that ball. It spun miles. It was full. Ah, oh, wow. Joe Root's got away with one. Well, we all would have thought he would have nicked that with the amount of turn and bounce that goes through to Villact. No, it was Yanke, uh, Rihanna, wasn't he, at slip? Yes, that's right. Rahani at slip. And now the ball's fired in the middle and leg quickly and Root is so relieved of it he gets a single to square leg and gets off strike. That was a beautifully flighted spinner, wasn't it? Absolutely wonderful delivery. I think we're all surprised he didn't nick it because the amount of turn and bounce that went to slip. Bit of something in this pitch for everyone. That's going down leg side. They withdraw the appeal. That quicker one from Aksha. Derek Underwood, uh, for those who followed the game a long time ago, bowled a ball just like that, used to thunder into people's pads. You get used to feeling for the spinning ball. And that quick ball fired in catches you playing around your pad a bit. Anyway, this one's also fired in, and he's on the back foot, is Zach Crawley. Collar up, looking commanding, defending. Breeze coming across the ground, a Zephyr, nothing more than that. Back goes Crawley, looks to drive and does so. Beats the man at short extra cover, but because he didn't quite time it, the old face just shut a bit as he tried to smack it, perhaps a touch too hard, and so he gets a single rather than a boundary that he might have otherwise got. So 13 overs gone, 41 for two. A word from Darren Goff, and then it'll be Neil Manthorpe. Yeah, there's been a bit of everything in this pitch. Uh, we've seen a little bit of uneven bounce, a little bit of movement through the air. We've got this hard pink ball. So the batsmen, when they have hit it and found the middle of the bat, it's run away for a boundary. So as we sit now, it's 41 for two England. After 13 overs here on TalkSport 2, Zach Crawley, 29, not out. His first game back after that freak injury to his wrist. And Joe Root has looked pretty assured at the crease, eight off just 21 deliveries. Neil Manthorpe, how are you? Yeah, good. I'm just trying to still find my way into the game, trying to interpret what, how it's going to progress mm -hmm. after the first hour. And, and as you just said, it's got a bit of everything. Bit of everything. Actually, it's got a lot of everything. Absolutely. Swung, turn, seen, bounce, yeah. bounce, turn. Um, and uh, and he just sort of trying to get a feel of what uh, what might be a good score at the uh, the end of the day at the end of the innings if England is still batting, but uh, I'm not I'm not there yet. I'm a long way off. 41 for two. Here's Ishant Sharma continues. That's over pitched and it's clipped away by Zach Crawley, who's been so good off his pads and that's another boundary. His fourth four every single time the Indian seamers have gone full and straight. He's just picked them off. I must say he's looking. Rather good. Absolutely, you can't fall into that trap. I mean, they do it with Dom Sibley, they do it with Zach Crawley. If you're going to do it, it's got to start outside off, going in onto off stump. Because once you start to go that little bit straighter, thinking they're going to miss it and they're going to get out LBW, they are so strong off their legs, especially uh, Zach Crawley. He's, <laughs> for such a young man, he's made a living actually playing the ball through the leg side. I said it was his fourth four. I meant through mid the mid-wicket region. It's actually his seventh boundary. He's up to 33. Here's Ishant once more. Crawley comes forward, pushes it up towards Ashwin at mid-on. And just for a moment, they were contemplating taking a cheeky single. But uh, Ashwin might not be the quickest, but he's not that slow. And uh, Joe Root sent him back straight away. Crawley, 33, 45 for two. He'd have been gutted, you know, missing those first two uh, test matches. He's worked so hard to get his opportunity with England. And having been up close with him and, and seen how he goes about his game, he's absolutely workaholic, absolute cricket nut uh, manners. And he wants to perform. He know uh, his strengths. He knows his weakness. He knows where he's got to work against the spin, especially left arm spin when he first goes to the crease. But I think it's helped him here, having two seamers at him straight away with a new ball. The uh, Sarda Patel Stadium in Matira Ahmedabad is a uh, symbol of national pride. Here is uh, um, Sharma and Sh Ishan Sharma driven again, this time through wide, long off, extra cover region. He's gone full and straight. He's looking for some swing. And Zach Crawley says, I'm not just a leg side player. I'll have another four through long off. Beautiful shot. Again, I mean, we have seen some magnificent strokes this morning. Absolutely fantastic. The full face, again, a little bit over pitch from Ishan Sharma. The full face of the bat from Zach Crawley. He had a good stride in as well. Head over the ball, still position, through extra cover, four runs, another boundary for England. Absolutely wonderful to watch this from Zach Crawley. He's glorious batting. He's completely dominated the scoring. 49 for two, England. 
and Crawley has 37 of them. Here is uh, Ishan Sharma once more, and Crawley leaves that one alone outside the off stump. Now, the reason I was starting to talk about the sort of the Patel Stadium is that it is, it's not, it, by, by any stretch of the imagination, it is not a concrete bowl. It's not like they've just got a million concrete trucks in and, and just built a big bowl. They've taken a great deal of pride and care, and uh, they've employed some of the best architects and finishes one of those finishes and perhaps they could have done with a little bit more cricket input here one of those fine beautiful finishes is a marble floor outside the change rooms <laughs> which with, for cricketers on metal spikes is a bit like being on an ice rink and um <laughs> and so the architects thought well we we want this area to be particularly impressive with the very finest of finishes and inside the change rooms uh, the facilities are magnificent here is Ishant to once more it's left alone by Zach Crawley now Crawley has uh, come striding out for his first net and has slipped as you do, would do on batting spikes on this marble floor and has landed and he's tried to break his fall by putting his hand down his arm down and that's when he sprained the wrist conspiracy theorists pointed out that outside the Indian change room of course they'd been there before um, there was a rubber mat all over the... <laughs> I was going to say, that would have been floor. the thing to do, wasn't it? Put a mat down. <laughs> well, the England team actually, immediately after it happened, got a whole bunch of towels and, um, and created a, a toweling pathway to uh, the nets outside. <laughs> really, as you said, a freak injury and a, such a shame on this form. That's again over pitched and again it's driven through the onside by Crawley. India are trying to protect that space out there in the deep and they have done with Akshar Patel who's, well, he's having like a deep mid-wicket position. It's a really, really strange position. He does seem to be, seems to have been placed there for protection, but protection for the bad ball it would seem to me. 14 overs gone, 51 for two, Jared. Did you know the colours that were tested um, at first class level in Australia before they went to pink? Either of you know the two colours? Orange. 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 Yeah, they also tried yellow, which was used in indoor cricket as well. If you have a look at the seats, so I was at the yellow and the orange balls because they were both played in Melbourne. Um, well, some of those games were played in Melbourne. The orange seats in this ground are exactly the same version of orange that Dean Jones made uh, a triple 100 against, I believe, in one of those early games. And against it the orange ball. Yeah, it turned out uh, it was absolutely impossible to see for about 40 minutes of the day uh, in that dusk period. And the yellow one was even worse uh, from memory. So they, uh, they quickly moved on. But that's what, so that was in the 90s which is how long um, uh, Australia's been looking Max at this. Akshar Patel in for another over of left arm spin. It's nudged away for a single by Root up towards mid arm. Yeah, I think, uh, I'd have to look up the dates, but I think Dean Jones's one might have been around 96 or 97. So very, very early on, Australia was onto this, but they didn't quite invest in it enough. And then it took them about another five or 10 years to really come back to it. So it, it and there have been, there have been day night games um, throughout, uh, throughout the nineties and early two thousands. So it isn't as new a concept as some people think. Dean Jones 96, it's gonna be before that surely. Here is Akshar again, forward comes Crawley, no run, 52 for two. For Victoria. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. They, these were all shield games. So there was no day night test games. These are all first class games. I think there was a bunch of Indian um, day-night games as well, where they might have played in colours and whites. I'll have to look that up, but it has happened before. Axa, slightly shorter. Crawley goes back and defends once more. And these are all pre-pink ball. This is, this is all pre-the pink ball. So there was like a pause. There was like a bunch of day-night games that were being trialled in different places around the world. They couldn't get it right because they couldn't get the ball right. And the big problem is... Axa, then once again, beats the outside edge. A little bit of turn and grip. And Zach Crawley holds his pose. As if to say, how did that happen? There's fundamentally two problems. The balls that they originally trialled didn't work at dusk, and white balls don't work because you have to paint them. That's why we can't even have one white ball for a one-day game. They don't last that long. So you've got those two problems always happening. The other problem, Jared, is that like many innovations, the game of cricket was slow to embrace the concept of day-night cricket. Well, well day-night first-class cricket, I should say. That's pushed away defensively up towards mid-off, fielded by the bowler. I mean, certainly, it, you know, if you look at how early baseball was playing in day-night compared to cricket, there's a big difference there, but the ball does bounce off the pitch. Uh, but yeah, there was, there was certainly a lot of people who never wanted this to happen. Axel Patel in once again, and uh, a thick inside edge, I fancy. 
down towards backward square leg or short fine leg and they go through scramble through for a single Crawley moves on to 40 my goodness me he's batted well and Joe 40 off 54 balls Joe Root has nine you're listening to commentary the third test between India and England on TalkSport 2 with the backing delighted to say of the Times and the Sunday Times cricket writing with an edge Jared my guide to your success a book I did in 1994 I actually talked about the future of cricket and we would have day and night within five years uh, and people laughed at it laughed at this book I promise you when it when it did when I did it and I couldn't believe when we started getting day and night uh, games in, in England it was just like wow it always had to happen though didn't it surely people talked about oh they, they do it in Australia because they get the weather and all that listen it's a spectacle it's going to happen all around the world whether you like it or not it's about TV rating exactly it, you have to put it's it on when people are watching so yeah it, it's ridiculous also I did a lot of research into this when the pink ball first came in I can't find more than about two or three million dollars ever invested by anyone in cricket into the actual development of the ball. Cricket Australia put a little bit of money in, the MCC put a little bit of money in, the ICC hosted some uh, events. Ashford into the attack for the first time, begins with a low full toss which is driven down the ground. Jasper Bumera is at long on and he will keep them down to a single, 54 for two. So you were talking about something that is a potentially a billion dollar game changer to what money you can make into the future of the game. And cricket just went, we'll, we'll wait for someone else to develop it. We'll just sit back here. And that's why the pink ball isn't as good even now as it should be for test match uh, uh, cricket. It's, uh, it's incredibly complex, isn't it? You would have thought that wouldn't be so uh, difficult to get the, the ball right and coating the, uh, also I mean the, what was discussed here's Ashwin again gives a bit of air some loop and it's pushed away by Root to mid on there was great consideration given to changing the number of overs before it could be replaced um, because they were here forward comes uh, Root again pushes away defensively no run 54 for two so rather than working incredibly hard to make the ball last 80 overs they were there was talk of that why don't we just change it up to 50 well it used to be 55 overs didn't it the new ball was taken so it's not like we haven't had that before in cricket but the wickets are so low in day night test Ashwin in once more right onto his stumps goes Root playing defensively no run I should say the averages are so low that if you gave someone a new ball an extra 20 overs early I'm not sure how it would go but what they did originally especially in Australia is they just put extra grass on the wicket didn't they to protect the ball a little bit more Ashwin in once more and that one is uh, tickled off his pads through square leg for a gentle single by Root who moves into double figures on 10 England 55 for two and perhaps that's one of the reasons why India are thinking do you know something yeah the new ball will be great but because it gets batted on a dry pitch after 10 15 overs the spinners are going to have more effect and three men round the bat forward comes Crawley to Ashwin and uh, blocks it out towards mid on no run over uh, 16 comes to an end England 55 for two after winning the toss and batting what the cricketers have told me about the kookaburra pink ball and this is this is the SG pink ball isn't it but mm. about the kookaburra pink ball is it goes really really soft so if you get into a period where you're batting throughout the day period and you're on top you can really cash in um, and that you know the red ball uh, doesn't doesn't get anywhere near as soft so it gets soft about 10 or 15 overs quicker than the red ball which is another factor which is why they wanted to put extra lacquer on it but if you put too much lacquer on it it starts pinging around sideways everywhere well this one has uh, given us the impression that it has something well it has quite a lot for everybody for the for the swing bowlers, for the seam bowlers, for the spinners. Here is left arm spinner Akshar Patel. <laughs> and that one is uh, flicked out towards short leg where it's fielded by Shubman <laughs> Gill who lobs the ball onto the batsman's stumps. Not that he had uh, he'd gone back into his crease. <laughs> slow again. motion that one. It, 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 it almost like it was in slow-mo. Uh, middle of the bat. Good fielding actually from Shubman Gill at uh, short leg. And then, sorry, by the time he'd thrown it, Joe Root had probably had a cup of tea and waiting for it to come back and hit the stumps. England 55 for two there is a feeling about day night test matches that, that there is an inherent risk here is uh, Akshar Patel once again and it's flicked away behind square for a single by Joe Root and I mean inherent risk as in you, you you try so hard to get the balance right between bat and ball and you know there are so many factors and we've only been playing day night test matches for less than a decade and you know there's uh, just this concern that uh, the 
the balance will swing dramatically more towards the bowlers rather than the batsmen, which is a nice change, actually. That, well, that's good delivery from Axar again. Turn, beat the outside edge, I think. Maybe Crawley just brought them out inside the line. What's happened, though, when it does turn, uh, what we've seen so far this morning in that first hour is, but when it goes, it goes very quickly and it goes with bounce. Absolutely, it's the speed of the turn, isn't it? We often talk about, well, there's turn, but it's slow, which is less of a threat. Forward comes Crawley again, pushes it out to mid-on. And there have been times in day-night test matches where the balance has swung hideously <laughs> towards uh, an imbalance towards the bowlers. A couple of years ago, there was a day-night test match between South Africa and Zimbabwe, which was always a, a mismatch anyway. That one is slightly full, it's drivable. He does drive. They set off for a quick single. The throw from Jastrick Bumra, or from uh, Jinkia Rahani, doesn't hit the stumps at the non-striker's end. But, that, yeah, that was a mismatch anyway. South Africa's groundsman left 16 millimetres of grass. That's a, a centimetre and a half of grass on the pitch. And the test match was over inside four sessions. Forward comes Axel, oh, Axel once again, and uh, the ball is blocked defensively by Joe Root. He remains on 11. Joe Crawley has 40. Zach Crawley has 42. England are 57 for two. I, I agree with you. I've never understood that. Yeah, they want to keep the ball pretty hard, but once you start putting grass on, uh, leaving grass on the pitch, we do it. They do it in England as well, thinking it's going to help. But the game finishes and it loses it's spectacle because the game's over so quickly like i said I'm, I'm never in for a game of cricket to be over in two days a four-day game or a test match over in three days the only reason people we don't watch want it that. only reason people watch it is for the same reason they slow down to look at a car crash isn't it i mean it's like it's like it's, yeah it's messy it's horrible it is and, and i say you leave all that grass on with a pink ball new pink ball with a big seam what, what do you think's gonna happen and then under lights it's just gonna move even more isn't it I must say, Zach Crawley has batted absolutely beautifully. Andrew McKenna will take over for the next 20 minutes. Thank you, Manus. Ashwin to continue. Right arm over the wicket, bowling to uh, Crawley, deep in his crease. As he drags his foot back, it kicks up a whole load of dust. And we've seen a couple of balls already, just little puffs of dust as they land on the surface. But England 57 for two, though, won the toss and batted. Sibley and Bairstow both dismissed for Ducks, but Crawley is there, 42 from 60. He gets a Karen ball from Ashwin that he pushes out on the offside. And there is no run, Goffey. Yeah, I'm surprised it took so long to bring Ashwin into the attack. He's been the most successful bowler for India in this series. He's looked dangerous no matter whether he's bowled with a new ball or old ball. Ashwin is in. Solidly forward is Crawley and there is no run. But I'll tell you what England have done well uh, throughout this series. I know they've it's won all the series, they've won one, lost one. But they have tried to retake the strike and they've always looked for those quick singles. And we saw that the last over where Zach Crawley pushed one to mid off and they got through for a quick single. So important. Three around the bats as Ashwin goes in, takes high on the bat, almost up near the handle, towards short leg, but drops short, no run. This is what it is about uh, playing in India for me, the excitement, the noise around the bat, the field is in close, the turn, the bounce. So exciting to watch, isn't it? Absolutely. Slip, leg slip, short leg, not involved in that delivery at all, though, because Zach Crawley, giving it the full maker's name, pushes back down the pitch. Yes, yeah, as you would expect, been a good start from Ashwin. Tall baller. Lots of variation, changes his pace. To complete the over, right arm over. Oh, that's a ball that's drifted down the leg side. It's swung hard into the leg side by Crawley. Comes off of Shubman Gill's pads and just trickles down to a short, fine leg. And they will take a single to finish the over. It's Talk Sport 2, England winning the toss and batting 58 for 2 after 18 overs. Yeah, I've been really impressed with uh, Zach Crawley, uh, Maka. He's come in, like I say, been out of the game with an injury, he's come back, he's fought his way back into the start 11, they've left Burns out to give Crawley that opportunity, he got a big, big score, wasn't it, last year, he was against Pakistan, won it, big 200, so he's got his opportunity here, facing seam with a new ball, he's been able to get settled before spins come into the attack, and 43 off just 65 deliveries, and some of the shots, we started off with KP earlier in commentary, talked about that shot he played to get his first boundary, he's played some wonderful shots, since whether it be on the offside or the leg side it's been magnificent so far eight boundaries to his name 
out of his 43. Root at the non-striker's end. Crawley is driving into the offside, driving through the offside again. You cannot give this man balls to hit on the drive. Onside, offside. He's making it look so easy. It goes to 47. England 62 for two. Well, he's got such long levers, hasn't he? Once he gets his hands through the ball, he's got such a strong position at the crease. Head right over the ball, just lets his natural flow of the hands go through it, and he's just such a good timer of the ball. Akshar gets back to the end of his mark, comes in again, left arm around and puts an absolute ripper past the outside edge of Crawley's bat. And Crawley's got 47 from 67, and even he can't lay a blade on that one. But just said last over, Mackie, you know, when it does go here, there's definitely encouragement for the spin bowler. The Both these Indian spinners are quite tall. When it goes, it goes huge, but it goes quickly and with bounce. That's gone from middle and leg, I reckon. Akshar is in again. That is short. Punched off the back foot by Crawley. And that's another boundary. And Crawley has 50. He goes to 51 from just 68 deliveries. And he's got 51 out of the total of England. 66 for two. His fourth test 50. And he's played it absolutely beautifully. Back into the side today. Well, take a bow. Uh, Zach Crawley, I mean, winning the toss and batting. It's after the battle, you've got to go out there and do it in a test match after a short break. But he's come out and played shots all around the wicket. Through mid-wicket, through the offside, straight down the pitch, and now a cut shot off Aksar Patel. The ball's seeming. We've seen a little bit of two pace there out of the pitch. It's spinning, but it's a fine 50. Akshar is in again. Again off the back foot is Crawley, pushing into the offside. And India are actually stationed man deep sweeping in a test match in what well, before lunch um, that's how well Crawley is playing they want to try and reduce and just try and stem his run flow a little bit 52 he is from 67 for two the England nine from the over now Root is on strike and that sweeper is going to stay out on the offside boundary Akshar left arm around Root goes down on the paddle there's a, a very optimistic appeal, shall we say, from Richard Pant from behind the stumps, going well down the leg side. And uh, the angle was horribly, horribly wrong from it. And <laughs> there'll be no run and no review, more importantly. Well, it's a big half an hour now, isn't it? Let's, let's be fair about this now, up to lunch. 67 for two. England, decent position if they can get through to lunch. Akshar, left arm around, Root. It's hurried a little bit there, is it hurries onto him, takes the inside edge, out onto the pad, and off on the uh, offside. End of the over, 67 for two, England here on TalkSport 2. But if you're India, they, they can prize another wicket, or even two before lunch, it becomes their session. So, uh, important part of the game, half an hour before lunch now, Zach Crawley set though on 52 of just 69 deliveries, Joe Root taking his time, he can afford to be watchful, he's got the guy at the other end, the junior pro, striking the ball so well, he can afford just to sit there, take his time, get used to the pace and bounce of the pitch, and let Zach Crawley keep going the way he's doing. Well, I'll tell you how well Crawley's playing, Root stood and applauded his 50, and Joe Root's been in some of the form of his life over the last few weeks, so uh, Joe Root appreciating. Sibley and Bairstow both gone for ducks, Sibley a seven ball duck courts at second slip off the bowling of Ishan by Rohit Johnny Bairstow LBW to uh, Akshar the first ball he bowled in the match now Crawley has got out the reverse paddle to um, Ashwin who's going to bowl right arm around the wicket it's fielded by Ishan Sharma the 100 test man that's the reason for the big cheer for the big fast bowler as he goes down and stops that ball but Crawley straight away happy to get the reverse paddle out Ashwin around the wicket, Karim Ball. It's going to go straight on on this occasion. Crawley just pushes out on the offside, no run. Goffey's moved out. Steve Harmison and Kevin Peterson have moved in to the uh, summarizer's chair. And gentlemen, so far so good for England. It continues. And Zach Crawley just continues to play beautifully. Ashwin into him. Oh, he's uh, got one on the back leg there. Now Pant is screaming, as is Ashwin. They want an LBW decision. They will have a conversation about whether they're going to review this. Virat Kohli walks up, consults the committee on this one. He's got his arms folded. There's five seconds, four seconds, three, two, and Virat makes the signal. They're going to send this one upstairs. Not Gentlemen, sure. your initial reaction. Not sure, not sure. This is going to have to pitch and straighten. 
not so sure. It's pitched in line and it's straightened. I actually think it's bounced as well. Yeah, there was a little bit of bounce there. Ashwin tall bowling around the wicket. So umpire Shamshuddin's already confirmed it's not a no ball, which the problems India had in the first test is a significant part. So the first thing they look for is the edge. You have a front on spin vision. We're looking at this first uh, angle uh, mid-off, which isn't telling us a great deal. Yeah, yeah this is a poor angle for us. <laughs> it's really going to tell us nothing. nothing. No, it's going to tell us nothing. It tells everybody nothing. So we're now going to await them to uh, get the spin vision, which is the front-on one, and then they'll presumably put Snicko on it just to confirm. But I, I, I think he's actually missed it by a decent amount. Pant wasn't convinced, but Ashwin was definitely convinced. Now we get the ultra edge. But they're not going to lose it if it's umpire's call, are they? Correct. So yeah. that's Flat probably line, why the they're going for it. Back, but this is fairly close to what we're seeing now, straight on. Yep, there's definitely no edge. So where's it pitched? In line. Pitching in line. Impact in line. Get umpire's call on field umpire on screen, please. So it was just clip the top screen, of off stump, which is umpire's call, and the umpire's original call was not out, and therefore it stays not out. And Virat Kohli walks away shaking his head. Yeah, and Stevie, you talked about the bounce. There bounce, was a little yeah. bit of bounce there. Ashwin got it to bounce. And Virat Kohli, he's always animated, and he's as animated as you could possibly imagine, shaking his head. Ashwin shaking his head. Ashwin bolts again to Crawley, pushes out on the offside, no run. Yeah, you don't have to be a body e a language expert to read Virat Kohli, do you? He leaves it all out there on show. <laughs> certainly does. It's an interesting little passage of play, this, because in India, when you're batting in India... Ashwin in, around the wicket, Crawley defends no run. It's very difficult to start. And things can happen so quickly. England are sitting here at 67 for two. They've got a good start. Crawley's got to 52. Crawley gets out there. You can go 80 for five very, very quickly. Things can happen so quickly in India. And therefore, you've got to make sure that your partnership or your batting partner really bats with you. And you have a great sense of communication, speak to each other well, help each other, encourage each other. Ashwin around the wicket, Crawley's pushing back down the pitch to complete the over. 67 for two are England after 20 overs here on TalkSport team. Kevin Peterson and Steve Harmison. And that's the important thing of having Joe Root at the other end for Zach Crawley, because Kevin, you'll know, you know, Zach's beans are going. You know, he's batted beautifully. He's timed the ball fantastically well down the ground. Whenever India have been offline, he's played beautifully. And, he, you know, you look at the score, there's, a, there's only 15 runs scored by everybody else other than Zach Crawley. But Joe Root, his his mind in this partnership is absolutely huge for England it certainly is huge for England and, and and they're lucky that he's playing well so he's not really thinking about his batting at the moment because he's picking length well he's playing nicely he's come off the back of that many runs so he doesn't really need to worry about batting and they say when you're playing at your best everything feels like it's in slow motion you're not worried about it there is no pressure there's no panic and that's how Joe Root's playing at the moment. He's going to face Akshar Patel, left arm around, Root goes down on the paddle, helps it around to uh, short fine leg. They'll take one, they'll come back for a second, but they don't need to. He's played it that well, Joe Root, that Ishan Sharma at fine leg has got no price of stopping it, and it goes away for four. Joe Root goes to 15, England 71 for two. And that's the value of Joe Root and, and how well he's playing at the moment. It was a ball that Akshar bowls that lands on off stump would have skidded onto the middle stump but joe roots looking to score runs and that's also the difference in the way you're playing and where you are in your career and how you're playing and the form that you're in are you looking to survive or are you looking to score runs akshar in hurries on to root root whips through mid wickets will take a single as uh, ishan sharma will uh, wander around and send it back in 72 for two but that there's a great lesson in batting from somebody who's batting well because what he's done is he's used the pace of akshar bowling around the wicket left arm with some some pace he's gone down on one knee because square legs in he wants to play off the back foot and use the pace to just rotate the strike Akshar in Crawley defence, no run. So he's took the risk at playing the, the, the sweep shot, the paddle sweep shot, deflected it for four, 
to get square leg to, to, to sort of short fine leg at 45 so now he can let the ball come to him play that a little bit later if it does spin Akshar in Crawley is taking on the uh, pad but it's going well down the leg side no he, can, he can cover the spin and play it into, into the leg side for one and, and really rotate the strike knowing how well Zach Crawley's playing because the last thing you want now is Zach Crawley to get bogged down at the non-striker's end all of a sudden go on a hole inexperienced potentially give a wicket away and go where Kevin has is, 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 is said England could possibly play if they lose a couple of wickets Akshar, left arm around, that turns and bounces, beats Crawley's outside edge, Rishabh Pant gets a little bit big on him, can't take it cleanly but he does stop it, yeah, and there's no run. And Crawley's played beautifully this morning, he really has, he's presented the full face of the bat, I heard Mark Nicholas talking about that a little bit earlier and it's what you have to do and it's what you want to do and it's what you dream about as a player, playing in India, presenting the full face of the bat as he does exactly that to complete the over Crawley pushing into the offside there is no run you're listening to commentary of the third test between India and England on TalkSport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times their cricket coverage is led by former England captains Mike Atherton and Sir Alistair Cook interesting there Virat Kohli he's they've tried a few different things with Zach Crawley and now Virat's going down the verbal route He's going to try and sort of put pressure on you. Is the crowd getting to him? Is the occasion getting to him? Hasn't played for a while. Zach Crawley's answered all these, these questions. Virat's now going to go down the verbal route. Is he going to give him a little bit of a volley to try and put pressure on Zach Crawley that way? Interesting times. Joe Root takes a new guard as he's just going to make Ashwin wait a little bit to start the new over. Still three men around the bat as... Ashwin is going to bowl, right arm around, and in he comes. Root uses his feet, just takes a pace just to get, to get there on the half volley, pushes to the deep fielder at mid-on, who is uh, Jasprit, who's probably 10 yards deeper than he would normally be. Single taken, 73 for two. Zach Crawley waits gets down and plays the reverse to Ashwin this one's pitch, pitching outside of leg stump Ishant Sharma fields at uh, point and a single take and Crawley goes to 53 from uh, 80 deliveries Root has 17 Jared Kimber uh, that's the second time this series that an English opener has reverse swept before lunch um, Rory Burns of course did it he didn't quite get away with it Ashwin in and Crawley is deep in his uh, crease turning this to the onside no run just wonder if Rory Burns is still waking up in cold sweats in the middle of the night after that reverse sweep thinking what might have been because he looked in such good form Ashwin goes in outside off stump on that occasion Root is forward playing uh, out on the offside he drops down at his feet and he actually uses the bat to uh, tap it away oh the stupidity of playing shots that yeah. you think you're in and <laughs> you think you can play you do go to bed that yes. night and you, you certainly do you think, oh no, should I, shouldn't have. But it's just that little moment. Ashwin in. Root taking on the pad. That's very close to LBW. Given. Joe Root so deep in the crease. He's in, reviewed it immediately. But this one might be a forlorn one. Because round the wicket, Ashwin has got it very full. Very straight. Root going across his stumps. We are going to the review. I think he, he said I hit it. He has to have hit this. He has to have. If he it was right back. It was inside his popping crease. And the finger went up straight away. We're going to see. So it pitches. It takes a puff of dust. He's not hit that. The only thing that might save him is if it's turning too much. But again, umpire's call is out. He's been given out, so umpire's call is out. The previous one, umpire's call, was no, he was not out, given not out. He hasn't hit this ultra edge, just proving that he hasn't hit it. Yeah, flat line when the ball passes the bat, ball tracking. So the umpire, Shamshuddin, is happy that there is no edge. So now we wait for the ball tracking. As Kevin Peterson has said, given out. So umpire's call, we'll see Joe Root walking off. And we'll see India having a massive wicket so close to lunch. They've taken two already today. Now the technology comes in. Pitching in line, impact in line, we get umpire's call, on-field umpire on screen please. Anil, stay with the original decision, you're on screen, give out please. He raises the finger, Joe Root walks off the ball, 
The technology said was just clipping the top of leg stump, but as he'd been given out in real time, that was good enough. England 74 for three as Joe Root walks off LBW to Ashwin for 17 made from 37 balls. Yeah, it looked as though Kevin just lost his balance a little bit more than anything else. He got right over to off stump. But here's a question for you. That ball there has hit the top of leg stump. Umpire's call given out Joe Root. Zach Crawley, who has got 53 out of 74, is given not out. Umpire's call hitting the top of off stump. At this minute in time, who would you rather have seen the back of? Joe Root, England's captain, 100 test matches, or the way Zach Crawley's playing? If I was an Indian. Yes, if you're the Indian captain. Root all day long. Root all day long. We've seen what Root's done over the last couple of weeks, or the last month or so, if you include Sri Lanka in that. And you also just, there's a level of calmness when he's out there at the wickets. And that's what you want to see. Because I would hate to see what we were talking about five minutes ago, an 80 for five situation, which could easily happen now. Because one could bring three or four in the subcontinent. You hear the crowd and they go up and they down and they're up. You heard the sweep shot when Joe Root got the sweep shot and went for four. You could hear a pin drop. And you feel that as a batsman in the middle of the wicket. But I'll tell you what you also feel. The crowd and the sense of what's about to happen and what they expect to happen with Stokes now walking out to bat. Absolutely. Ben Stokes does indeed walk out and take guard. And just to back up Kevin's uh, point, Joe Root against India in India averages just under 59 in test matches. 881 runs. That's before today in eight games. So uh, with 200, Joe Root is that dangerous. So Ben Stokes is in and marking his guards. There is a silly point. There are two slips in place. And so... Uh, Stokes just walks around the crease, made 82 and 7 in the first match in Chennai, 18 and 8 in the second. Settles in and waits as Ashwin goes in and bowls. There's a bit of bat and pad there, but there's no short leg on the leg side and it loops out. And Ben Stokes will be underway straight away with a single. And in fact, it's been given leg by as it in the end so no bat so uh, he's survived the first one end of the over Jared Kimber uh, Macca I was just having a look so Ben Stokes obviously has gone out to R Ashwin 10 times now and he averages 18 against Ashwin at the other end uh, Zach Crawley I think Mark might have mentioned this earlier has had a bit of a problem with left arm finger spin uh, he's been out four times in test cricket only making 58 runs against it so averaging 14 against it in test cricket in first class cricket he's been out um, uh, a couple of times the left arm finger spin again so it's a bit of a weakness for him so at one end you've got Ashwin uh, on top of Stokes and at the other end you've got Axar Patel possibly going up against a weakness of Crawley so they probably want to swap ends as much as possible well, let's see if they can do that we're not far away from the first interval quarter past four in uh, Ahmedabad local time 10.45 of course UK time lunch well we keep calling it lunch but actually the first interval in a day night game is tea and then what do we call the other is it dinner or, or the other it has interval has to be dinner yeah surely it's dinner it's got to be dinner <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call it interval one and interval two it's a lot easier right Akshar is going to bowl over the wicket to uh, Ben Stokes two men on the leg side close around the bound, uh, bat slip in place and he just plays it quietly out on the on side interesting to see how Ben Stokes plays this too there's a deep mid wicket there's a deep square leg there's mid on that's halfway to the boundary Akshar goes in Stokes takes this one on the back leg he actually sticks the back leg out deliberately to try and block it as an extra line of defense in case it misses the outside edge which that one does well he did actually tell us during the first test in Chennai that um, he basically decided that there was going to be one with his name on and he'd rather be caught on the boundary than caught at silly point so it'll be interesting to see if he feels the same a way absolutely right but here you're batting first in a test match the wicket's supposed to be playing at its best now but then is it playing good enough for him to trust it and to just swing and to just have a real good go at it, a real good positive go at it? 
at Sharasin enough and he's now gone round the wicket straight away Stokes deep in his crease punching on the onside Pajara will field at mid wicket and there is no run I actually, I actually think sometimes when you watch Ben Stokes it feels as though he bats better when there's a little bit more pierce on the wicket and the ball comes to him rather than him having to go to the ball Stokes is deep in the crease on this occasion just pushing out on the onside no run we saw that in the IPL, didn't we, when obviously he, he went to the tournament late with the situation that we all, all know. But then to get himself going, he, he did seem to take a lot of times, two or three steps towards the ball, just to get some momentum into that shot that he's playing. Akshar over the wicket, he's going over, round, over, round. This one is just pushed back down the pitch by Ben Stokes, no run. You can hear how noisy the fielders are around the bat. You can hear it in our ears here, hopefully you guys can hear it as well. It's that extra little bit of pressure that the Indian fielders... Stokes gets down on one knee, plays the uh, sweep, paddles it around to uh, fine leg and will take a single to end the over. 23 gone, 76 for three, England here on TalkSport 2. Yeah, it's that extra little bit of pressure that you know and you can feel as a batsman when you're out there in the cauldron. You play Ashes cricket, I mean, Army, you play Ashes cricket and you've got somebody standing at second slip, but he's quite a distance behind you. You don't really have that pressure that stands around you for a good four or five hours of a day here you know, I always find myself when I'm talking about the game of cricket and uh, there's a level and then uh, where you play first class cricket there's the test level and then playing in India and playing in Australia are very very similar you know from Australia because of the ashes and because of what it means to an England and Australian but the level of pressure and the crowd and the noise and everything that goes with playing in India is absolutely huge. And if you can withstand that, you are a good player. Ashwin comes in, Stokes comes down the pitch, just pads away and there's no run. Yeah, this is the contest. Ashwin, he's bowling well, he's batting well, he's speaking well as well. His press conference, speaking very, very well. Very articulate, uh, Ravichandran Ashwin. And he goes in and this one hurries on to Stokes inside portion of the bat down to short fine leg no run and he really understands his game very knowledgeable he, he studies the game studies individuals he knows what everybody says as well he reads a lot he's a very interesting character is, uh, is our Ashwin Ashwin around the wicket Stokes solidly forward and there uh, is no run apologise I've overstayed Nico take over the ball by ball you do so well <laughs> no need to change you. 76 for three. Morning session coming into its last 15 minutes. Down goes Ben Stokes. And sweet enough. Not super sweet. But uh, you'll settle for that because the intent works. And that gives you confidence as a batsman. Little dance down the pitch. He drove uh, Ashwin high and hard and got four for it. And it's exactly the way for Stokes to go, KP. Yeah, I think so, Marky. I think uh, it's the way that he is just going to play. Uh, natural aggression. And he's going to pick the bowler. He's going to pick the line. He's going to pick the length. And he's going to fully commit. And he has to fully commit. There's no half-heartedness here at all. And he plays forward defensive. I'd say that his defensive flaw on the back foot to the off-spinner was a problem for him. And therefore, he'd rather use his strength, which is to attack the off-spin. I think his defending on either foot against the seamers is great. He can play longer um, innings against them, or certainly longer periods of, of defence against seamers than perhaps he can against spinners. So rather take the initiative straight away, which is a strength of his game anyway. And he's an imposing figure, so of course he's, he's putting a bit of the heat back on the bowler and fielder. There's now just a silly point. He's already got rid of short legs, so there's a silly point and Stokes asks Ashwin to stop. He wasn't ready. He was taking his guard and just taking in the field that's been reset. So I'll run it by you again because it's short legs gone. It's a, it's a silly point, slip and uh, leg slip. So now they're having a chat. Coley's saying, come on, get on with the game. And Stokes is saying, I'm just admiring your field settings, matey. And Stokes is having a laugh with him and goes back to slip. And it's all friendly enough. Deep backward square leg, mid wicket, mid on the man on the leg side. Stokes is well forward and makes sure he bends the front knee and gets the head over the ball, exaggerating the defensive shot. And still they go. Two of the world's great cricketers, two of the world's greatest ever cricketers at each other, but in relatively friendly parlance here in uh, 
Gujarati, the cricketing state that's uh, redeveloped this ground to make it something really special. And we can see even on television cameras, uh, followed a few videos and read a bit about it in the last few days. It's uh, spectacular in its, its size, in its uh, aesthetics, but also in its facilities. Yeah. Got a full Olympic pool for a start. You could, you, we've tried that pool <laughs> stuff, Kev. There's a bit more work to swimming than we remember, <laughs> isn't there? I tell you what, you were a much better swimmer than I uh, thought I was at, uh, at that stage in Dubai, Mark. You're good enough. Well, what, 20, 20, was it 20, was 25 metre pool in Dubai? I think it was you were just rolling 25 out, or 30. I you were just rolling 30 out 30 maybe. to 50 laps every single day? Well, 70 in the end, but you left. <laughs> I couldn't get to 10. You freaked out. <laughs> you, you disappeared. 70 in the, in the end. But um, 80 for three then. Crawley 53, Stokes 6. Uh, mind you, you were doing like 100 Ks on your bike most days. Um, oh, he's left it alone and it didn't spin and it's missed off stump by a whisker. Zach! Oh. Two types in the camp. Yeah, there's there two is. types. As a bowler, you think, right, listen to it. Because it, oh, it hasn't rattled. And as a batsman, you're just hoping you don't oh, hear that rattle. Look where he's okay, taken that. Rishabh Pant's taken that behind middle stump. Hello, Harmy. I, I didn't know you were so we're having a personal chat about our training routines. And now, oh, he's beaten him with a lovely... This guy can really bowl. Uh, he, he's got lovely control and a brain for it. Because he's a batsman, he can think like a batsman. And he always lobs up the one the batsman least wants. I, I think that he's the closest that they've got to Jadeja. Yeah. And when I saw Jadeja go down and hurt himself in Australia, I thought that that was a huge, huge plus for England. Because Jadeja is some cricketer. He, he is. is a fabulous, yeah. fabulous cricketer. Yeah. Yeah. And then balls again. <laughs> and they've been him. Yes, LBW. It sort of had to be. Crawley half forward. The ball runs in with the arm. Glances the front pad, and I think Ben Stokes is saying, yeah, it doesn't look good, Zach. It doesn't look good. What's he going to review? The clock's running out. He's no. turning for home. He's got to go. He's got to go. On the stroke of lunch, England lose Zach Crawley, who played particularly well. That's a devastating blow, and a moment of brilliance from Aksha Patel, who we were just heralding. Yeah, he's played so nicely as Zach Crawley, but he's got one that skidded, he's got one that spun. And the third one skids again and he plays all around it. Umpire straight up, Aksha straight up, Coley straight up. 50,000 people straight up as well and it's happening quick, we talked about it. It was 67 for three when we talked about it, it's now 80 for four. And the stroke of T, Crawley goes, England in a little bit of trouble. Maybe even just a little bit more than a little bit of trouble. Like a big bit of trouble. Four down at lunch and still time for a fifth to fall against a rampant Indian side who've just won by 330 odd. Eight minutes to go to the lunch break. Ouch. It was a fantastic bit of bowling though, Mark. You know, he just bowled that little bit slower, two balls earlier, in and around that sort of off stump line, and it's jagged away. Good, good bit of spin. And like you say, the one that he leaves, which has gone into uh, Rashi Pan's hands, just behind middle stump, and then that one. An absolute beauty, which has just gone on with the arm. Um, Zach Crawley played very, very well, and we talked at the top of winning the toss and getting two hours of batting and the perfect sunlight on a decent pitch. Um, and England have, have fluffed their lines a little bit. Yeah, well, two down is England's morning, three down is even Stephen, marginally in favour of bowler. Four down is in favour of Ebola, end of story. So Oli Pope arriving out in the middle to be with Ben Stokes, two very gifted batsmen. Pope has shown promising signs in the game so far without at any stage settling. And uh, really, to bat long in India, you have to be settled. You have to manage to get through the first 30 balls in your own way some do it by defending some look to play more shots i think stokes will play more shots though maybe not in his moments before t he's danced down once and hit ashwin over the top ollie pope then on strike to aksha patel the balls in an absolute jaffa a looping spinning left arm spin piece of perfection beats the outside edge is taken at chest height by rishabh pant 
Just that slow again, just that loop that he's got is beautiful. It just looks good in the air, it looks like slow motion in the air. And it just jags away, just as it goes past the outside edge. An absolute beauty. And, and because of that spin, the bat is drawn a little away from the body and nearly an inside edge then with the one that goes straight on. If the replay of Crawley's dismissal tells you anything, it's that exactly that happened. The ball before took his bat a little from the line he wanted it to be. 25 gone, 80 for four the score. Yeah, 80 for four. Crawley's gone for 53. Sibley got zero. Bairstow, zero. Root, 17. England's got a long tail. Archer, Leach, Broad, Anderson. <laughs> how do you play in that situation, Kev, when one's turning and one's not? As a batsman, how would you, what would your mindset, Kevin Peterson's, mind, Kevin Peterson's mindset be in this situation? Because one is turning when he's bowling slower and the quicker one's not turning at all. Yeah, I was, I was actually just thinking about that, Harmy, because it's about natural variation from the bowler. Now, oh, Ashwin, very full at Stokes. He goes forward and pushes almost a half volley back to Ashwin and it's something you can't control as a batsman you got to think about you and you got to think about how you play and I think especially in India again forward he goes at carbon copy you've got to be heavily focused on playing off the back foot and really making sure that you don't over commit on the front foot because as soon as you start to over commit on the front foot that's when you get into all sorts of trouble now he bowls it a little more towards leg stump, seeing if Stokes wants to shut the face on the ball, but Stokes resists and pushes with a straight back to mid-on. And that's not to say that you go back to every single delivery. It's about picking length, and it's about understanding the pace of the bowler. But also, there's occasions... Now he beats him with one outside off stump <laughs> on the back foot. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> what? I'm trying to explain it, you're thinking it's hard that easy to stuff, do. Isn't it? It's hard. It's hard. I mean, I, I'm, trying to, I, yeah, I'm trying to give it, a, uh, trying to give it some sort of an explanation. And where I'm leading to is that sometimes you're just not good enough, Harmy. Sometimes you, as a test bowler, were too good for batsmen. Forward he goes. He defends on the front foot. He was beaten on the back foot the ball before. How it didn't hit the top of off, we shall never know. Uh, the bad end's very straight with Crawley. We're just watching the replay on the TV. But, uh, Anyway, here's uh, Ashwin again, and that's uh, the first slightly inaccurate ball, and therefore uh, Stokes defends it comfortably leg side. I wrote a whole column about it, Kev, about how what happens when you get out into the middle, batting in the subcontinent, and the enormous pressure, the range of balls you face, the types of bowler, types of comments you hear, types of uneven bounce you get, low uneven bounce, slow uneven bounce, and also and how it's quick, damn difficult, and also how quick it happens yeah. because you've got spinners bowling from one end, and it's just Bowl, 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 bowl. Right, chop and change, bowl, bowl, bowl. So your over rate goes to 15, 16 overs an hour too. So you're facing that many more deliveries. The pressure is certainly on. It's, it's something where you've got to control the pace of the game. You know you're allowed 13, 14 overs in the game. So you've got to stop the bowler. You've got to play at your pace where you feel comfortable. Akshay <laughs> Patel forces... Ollie Pope well back, only his second ball, and he defends. Serious look on his face, sun cream on his bottom lip. Fidgets with his pads, he is. He gets them into position. His wide stance is ready now. And that's just a little down the leg side, and it's pushed into square leg very carefully, or mid wicket, I should say, but it, there's no run in it. Russia, uh, Rishabh Pant, one of the noisy ones, uh, but uh, plenty of encouragement for the bowler from Majinka Rahani. It's slip as well. There's a short leg and a gully to go with the slip. Down comes Pope. That's okay. Come down to defend. Nothing wrong with that. Punt has a laugh about it from behind the stumps to try to put, <laughs> it's so to put hard. Pope off. It's so hard, isn't it? Punt is there going behind it. Jinka Rahane, Virat Kohli. You've got to try and push it to one side. You've got to think about the ball and only the ball. Watch that ball. Play that ball. Understand your game. And again, down he comes, trying to get near the ball. This time... They thought they had him because he, he was done a little in the flight, but he did well, though. Stayed low, yeah. watched it close. Yeah, it's good. You've got to calm yourself. And he's actually done really well there. He's thought, let me get down to the pitch of the delivery and play it with a straight bat. He's played those two really, really well as Ollie Pope. He's just got to stay calm, keep it very simple. Let's bowl much, much straighter. In fact, really, at middle and leg. And it, it sort of curves in and then threatened to hold its line. But he played that well enough, and it drops down 
to short leg. <laughs> Frantic moments before the lunch break and not many of them. Here's Akshay Patel. Over pitches for once and he can flick it into the leg side for a single which means that if there's another over he keeps the strike he might be so pleased with that um, from to the end lad said Len Hunnell once about playing the best bowlers from to the end 81 for four then and there's a round of applause that tells me it might be the lunch break we can't see from the pictures yet though it looks yes the players are indeed making their way towards the dressing room you call it tea break you call it lunch break you can call it dinner break call it what you want it's a break it's the 40 minute break and it comes with India in control of the third test match in Ahmedabad it, it, and, and unsurprisingly given the quality of the bowling and the fact that one or two things have gone their way but the best thing when England's way winning the toss choosing to bat first um, Ah, now hang on, I've, Neil, you can tell me, it's a 20 minute interval. Okay, I've got that completely wrong, I apologise everybody. This is a 20 minute interval, so this is the tea, tea break. That, that's a, official. Bad information, I apologise. This is the 20 minute tea break, the 40 minute dinner break will come a little later in the day. Well, in two hours and 20 minutes time. As the Indian players uh, leave the field, they'll be very impressed with, with their work I think Ravi Shastri and the coaches will all say well we've done what we had to do without the seamers bowling quite at their best Crawley LBW Akshar 53 just now Sibley Court Road bowled Ishant no score Bairstow LBW Akshar no score Root LBW bowled Ashwin 17 Stokes uh, unbeaten with 6 and Pope with just a single 81 for 4 Ben Folks in next and then as Kevin Peterson just pointed out, Archer, Leach, Broad, Anderson, that's a long tail.